This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that you find there on our website. We give them away to you, and they're free at freetalklive.com. Plus, if you want to join us on the radio, you can call us on Skype as well. Our Skype username here tonight is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request. We'll approve it, and after that, it'll be easy for you to get on the air with us here. And the us tonight includes me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J. is back. Uh, taking a, you took a nice little week long uh, vacay there down to the home, uh, the original home in the Philly area. Yep, right? I went to Philly, visited family, uh, had a great time, and feel re- rested and rejuvenated, ready to return to the Shire. Ready to get back at it, of course. Uh, yeah, in the- I, I mean, I was following what was going on in the Shire while I was away, feeling like I was missing, missing all out. the action. <laughs> Everything's happening. It's it can feel that way. I totally understand. I feel that way too. Even when I just go out for you know a weekend to uh, like a radio convention or something, there's these emails and Facebook, and I'm like, oh, I'm not there. I could be there and help them with that or whatever that is. Um, and of course, what one of the things that transpired while you were away was the school that you and I went to last week to do school outreach, which I believe we discussed on the air last week. That school has now sent a letter home to parents. To certain, we think certain parents, not all of the parents, uh, but they sent a letter home basically saying, hey, your child was recorded without their consent uh, in front of the school last week, and we're very concerned about it. This is a violation of your child's privacy, and we have contacted law enforcement, and, and we are going to, we have a plan to remove them if they show <laughs> up again uh, on our campus. Good. Yeah. They're prepared for the <laughs> for the people handing out information. Are you scared? No. What no. should I be afraid of? <laughs> no. I've been detained and banned from this school before. Right. If anything goes down, it'll. I've had practice at it. I, it can't be worse. Well, the, I mean, unless they come at me with pepper spray, and I doubt they'll do that with all the kids around. So this will be interesting too, because this time it's going to be different, uh, given that we actually have parents on the inside. So the letter that, you know, we found out about the existence of this letter because one of the parents who's a liberty-oriented family, actually Free Staters, uh, sent this letter (laughs) to, you know, posted this letter in a local group here on Facebook and said, here, look what we got. And uh, and so they're everywhere. <laughs> the well, free right. staters have eyes, and they're they're actually the the parents in this case are now contacting the school, asking questions about this letter that was sent home, <laughs> uh, demanding answers from this bureaucrat, and they're asking some really tough questions as well. I don't want to reveal that information right now because I want to wait till we get some sort of semblance of an answer from them, which I suspect we won't get. Um, but you know, nonetheless, that's that's one of the things that developed while you were away, and our listeners might be interested in because we did talk about that. Well, that was cool, but I could I could live uh, vicariously through Facebook on that one. What I couldn't live vicariously uh, through the internet on is your march through Keene on Memorial Day, oh, which yeah. I thought was so cool. It doesn't happen anywhere else. It's such an oh, easy it must happen thing. somewhere else. Yeah, but it's such easy activism to do to go join up with the the parade. Uh, it's fun. It doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, I think it sends a good message, and I was just jealous. I was at a barbecue, which is also fun and cool, but I was like, oh, look at look at my friend marching in a parade for peace. Yeah, it was really great, too, because this year we had a record turnout. Uh, last year, it was me. Uh, the, year right. be- the year before that, it was four people, and this year it was close to a dozen. Not quite a, or not wow. quite a dozen, but at least nine or ten uh, people that I think uh, having the kids there. really made a difference too. Oh, I think so as well. So we had a bunch of kids, and then you know the parents there, and myself and Daryl uh, were out as well, and it was great. I mean, we had people with peace uh, peace flags and and signs about that were anti war, and I think the only thing that would have made it better, and unfortunately they couldn't make it due to having to go to work, uh, would be to have some veterans out there, uh, like wearing their battle dress uniform or whatever it's called, their fatigues or mm-hmm. whatever. And then, uh, you know, carrying peace flags. I think that would be a cool juxtaposition oh. for the people who, you know, were passing by. Was so there any, next year. anyone, you know, throwing any nasty looks or oh, lots yeah. of thumbs up? Uh, or mostly what, positive reactions. Yeah, mostly positive reactions from, from the people who react. Mostly positive reactions. But Most people don't even see you, right? They're just whatever. Who knows? I mean, I don't, you know, they, they see us, but they don't make any kind of verbal right. or other acknowledgement of us. 
Yeah. Um, so, but of those who reacted, many positives. Two that actually came up to us and said thank you and you know mm. shook our hands and things mm. like that. Um, and then, there, of course, was the requisite heckler who uh, you know was walking along next to us, going boo, <laughs> boo. And then he crosses in front of me at one point at a pace that, had I continued my pace as I was, yeah. I would have run into him. Uh-oh. So he crossed sort of purposefully in that way. Trying I think to be antagonistic, yeah. and, but I slowed down to, to the where, guy with a peace flag. Right. Yeah. Brave um, man. Tough guy. Yeah. So I slowed down, and I did not uh, encounter him, and he said some choice words or whatever. But And oh then my. there was the one lady who uh, who shielded her children's eyes and said, don't even look at them and turn them around. <gasps> <and> <laughs> don't look at the peace flag. <laughs> Only murder, kids. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was fun. I mean, it's, you always get those reactions. Like, yeah. You know, there was one guy as I was walking home. I don't think I talked about this one on the air, but as I was walking home, there was an old older gentleman in his driveway, and this was away from the the parade. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on a side street now at this point, and he made some comment about you could have picked a better day for it, and uh, you know, some, something about you know. Which day do they have parades down yeah. Main Street? And I said, well, it seemed like a fine day to me. Good afternoon or good morning or something. <laughs> you know, just being super cheery. <laughs> and he sounded like he was crying. Uh, you know, oh. it sounded like he was going to cry as he walked away. I forget what he said, but he, his guy. voice was was very shaky. Well, you know, it can be a difficult for, confrontation's difficult for everybody. Yeah, sure. Um, and it's uh, an adrenaline uh, yeah. rush for so, a lot of people. I, I'm not surprised that he, you know, felt that way. We got Mike. He's in Clackamas, Oregon, and you can join us here at 855 450 free. Uh, coming up, we've got a woman going to jail for her son's truancy, plus a letter from a federal prisoner that I teased last night about Ross Ulbricht and the upcoming sentencing. But again, first, Mike with us here in Oregon. Go ahead, sir. Hey, folks. Well, so, just got off the phone with, uh, just for the hell of it, I want to uh, call the the court system out here in Oregon just to ask them a random question. And the question was, is one allowed to, if somebody takes a traffic ticket to court and they want to uh, originally take it to, to trial, is one allowed to represent someone in court? Because I know you can do it in New Hampshire. Let me answer is the question for the bureaucrat. Before you go on, let me answer the question. Um, sure. If you ask the, the the bureaucrat, is one allowed? The answer is no. Every yeah, I, no. I, I yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't I wasn't too surprised on that. But and they, she she told me she told me no. Uh, one has to be a member of the bar association. Generally, that's true. Oh, I, Not here in New Hampshire, though. In New Hampshire, you can do right. it for uh, two times per year. You can represent another person as another non-bar association member, as a regular person. Um, they re- restrict it, though, to twice a year, and you have to be of good character. So the court has to approve you uh, in advance, meaning that if you have a criminal record of some sort, they could deny you on that one. I don't know what level of criminal record will allow you to be denied or approved, but Having some charges would make you less likely to be approved for that. Uh, but as long as you, you know, if you're squeaky clean, you can come to New Hampshire and you can provide representation right. to someone in court. You just have to swear basically a temporary oath to the court. Um, so essentially you are being sworn in as a temporary court officer just in the same way that an attorney takes that that oath. And so they will require that right. you wear certain nice clothing and things like that. So you, you do effectively become an, a, a sort of, I mean, not using, not the, not the word attorney, but in all th- factors you are essentially acting as an attorney in that particular case and that's something i'd like to see change here in new hampshire to allow someone to do that an unlimited amount of times per year rather than just twice and we're grubbies who's checking i mean i'm sure it's an unlimited amount of times well that's a good question Derek. if you want it to be well that right now what i wondered okay so what i think on that is i doubt that the courts are checking with one another Right. So I doubt but if you're that, twice in the same judge's courtroom, he's exactly. going to notice. Yeah. So if you're in front of Judge Burke uh, for a third time, Burke might say, "Hey, wait. <laughs> you know, you can only do this I twice." I can count. But what are the odds that the judge in Concord is going to know that you've done this twice? In... They probably won't even know there's a limit. Well, that's a well, good I... question. I mean, okay. they don't know their own I... rules, so there's an argument for that, Derek J. Mike. So I, I had asked um, the woman, I said, uh, you know, one cannot represent someone in court. I said, can I have the, R- uh, the ORS statute on that? She says, I don't know that I can, but there is a law. I said, can you find that out? She Stand says, okay. by, Mike. We're going to come back with the rest of your story. 855-450 free. And then we'll also uh, talk about the federal prisoner who wrote to the show about Ross Ulbricht's chances in court on Friday. It's Free Talk Live. 
Olive is a yellow lab, six years old, full of energy. But oh man, Olive was suffering, to use a word, like a dog. She was itching, she was scratching, she was licking. 24 hours a day, she was shedding all the time. And it drove my wife crazy because she had a vacuum in the house a couple times a day. So I'm going up the expressway and the radio commercial comes on. PD stopped eating, all his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur. Our hairballs have hairballs. And I almost drove off the road because I thought this person on the radio commercial was living with my dog, Olive. And I called my wife, I said, dear, you got to check out this product called Dynavite. Go to D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. So we started Olive on the Dynavite. In about six weeks, she almost has entirely stopped itching, scratching, stopped licking herself. Most of the hair has grown back under her belly. Unexpectedly, her coat has become smooth and shiny, almost like it was when she was a newborn pup. Olive is happy, and my wife is probably the happiest person because the house is cleaner. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important, with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting bloc and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Plenty of time for you to share your thoughts with us. And you can bring up anything that you like. Still to come, the letter from uh, someone in federal prison about what he thinks Ross Ulbricht's chances are come Friday's sentencing. Ross, of course, the man who's facing life in prison, possibly, for running a website called The Silk Road, the uh, world's most infamous underground drug marketplace. When you're online, you've got to protect yourself. You've got to take the steps 
because your internet service provider, they're not going to do it for you. Nobody's going to do it for you. Uh, they're probably saving your surfing history, in fact. Uh, every website you visit, the search terms that you're entering, maybe saving those logs for five years in some cases. And, of course, they'll turn it over to whoever they darn well please. Unless, of course, you get Pro XPN and then encrypt your data connection so your ISP no longer knows what you're doing online. You can do that by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Plus, when you're encrypting your data connection, criminals who want to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets, they're foiled. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can grab their app. It's free for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android devices, and Linux. You just go and get rolling with ProXPN, and you are protected. But you're going to want to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and you'll get it at 50% off the price of the annual account price when you use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and 50 as in 50% off. By the way, that locks in your price for this uh, for the lifetime of your account. So when you're ready to renew for your second year, same great deal from Pro XPN. But you gotta use promo code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless at proxpn.com slash FTL. We've got Mike back with us here in Clackmas, Oregon. You were explaining to us what happened in an Oregon, I think was it district court or superior court? Where were you? I, I I wasn't in the court. I had just called them. Oh, up you because, called them up, uh, and they yeah, uh, you had asked the question: What is it possible to represent someone to legally represent someone in court uh, without correct. being an attorney, basically? Correct. And she came back uh, with an answer, and she says, "I don't know the statute, uh, but if you go onto our website, you can you can look it up." And I says, "Well, I actually did do that, and I looked, I googled it, and she says, well." Uh, it should be on there. I said, you're saying there's a law, but you don't know what the statute is. And she said, yeah, there is a law, but we just don't know what the statute is. I said, okay, well, thank you for your time. And she, she hung up. Mm -hmm. And I just, I find it very ironic that, you know, when I was living in New Hampshire, uh, you know, I, I watched tons of, of the free teen videos on, you know, when you guys would represent each other in court and you'd have a, a good shot at beating the ticket. But, it just seems like in other states, the system, and not just you know Oregon, but I mean like you know Illinois and, and New Jersey and all those big government states, the system is kind of built around you have to have a lawyer. It's like who can really afford something like this? Yeah, well, that's yeah. the idea. I mean, who who do you think wrote the laws? Now the the whole representing yeah. uh, somebody as a non lawyer thing that's only happened a few times up here. That really hasn't happened very often. Garrett Ian has done it more than once. And I think he might be the only one. I don't know anyone else offhand who I can think of who's actually well, gone through that process. Um, I've I when I was watching a lot of your earlier videos, Ian, there was a man named Sam Dodson. No. So what well, you were seeing happen there no. is that Sam Sam was up there with me, but he was not representing me legally. So what that was, I don't know what that's called, but it's basically they just let stand by counsel. Could be maybe, but they, they, you don't have you don't have to go through any kind of process to be approved to just go and sit at the table with somebody. So Derek J, if you wanted me to come sit with you during one of your trials, it would be allowed. Uh, the judge wouldn't bat an eye at it; he would be totally fine with it. And so that's happened regularly. They that's figured different. you need a keeper. That's why. That's funny. Uh, so thanks, Mike, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Actually, I would say that Sam's additions uh, weren't particularly helpful, and sometimes they, you know, when it, uh, they didn't really add much at all. But and it, it was a little distracting as well to have somebody up there. So you really need to uh, have someone up there who is uh, who knows their stuff. And those people are not representing. They're just up there to consult with. You can talk. You can you know whisper with the person, but they aren't asking questions. They aren't cross examining. They're not, you know, getting up there doing the attorney thing. So to this, to this caller, I would say just try it. Just go do what you want in the courtroom and see what happens. Because I think for the most part, if you're confident about what you're doing, they're going to let it fall by the wayside. You know, unless they really have some rule, you know, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. You're That's not going to get it from the bureaucrat. Generally, a good rule, but I would be very cautious in going alone to a court and doing whatever you want. Um, because, you know, there is power but in numbers. They'll give you a yelling at before they arrest you. I mean, you'll Generally. be warned. Yeah, but the, the answer, when it comes to government bureaucrats, the answer is no. And then yeah. you can try to fight your way to a yes, and but that's what it really what it comes to. Sometimes the yelling prior to the arrest only lasts for seconds, though, Derek <laughs> J., as you uh, you and I both know. Uh, it can The patience of a judge can run out very quickly. 
with somebody who isn't doing as they're told or not doing exactly as they're told. Usually with you guys, though, the judge has uh, some sort of, uh, uh, there's a bias already built in. The judge doesn't necessarily have a bias against our caller. Well, you know, I don't know about that necessarily, Mark. I would say that Judge Burke has mellowed out over the years in the yeah. same way that some of yeah. the activists have mellowed out. Uh, over the years as well, and I, you know, he's come down with a few good rulings. So sure. I don't think it's, you know, maybe he does have a bias. He has I, a bias that, uh, you know, he had a bias initially that you're going to cause trouble. Yeah. And now his bias has moved to, well, you're noisy and annoying, but you're not really <laughs> going to do anything. Yeah, maybe he's also said things about how he respects uh, our abilities in court. He complimented you specifically in that move. I think it's in Derek J's victimless crime spree, or at least you reference it. Yeah. Uh, where you received a compliment from Judge Burke, and I've seen him compliment others. Even in cases that they've lost, he has uh, granted compliments on their legal representation of themselves, if you I will. I think he respects it in a way. I you think know, he does. As a judge, you've got to respect someone who's using your process. They They appear to respect it, at least for the moment. Well, right, they appear to, and then they ignore whatever <laughs> rules are convenient for them. So I, I'm just, you know, I'm cautious to say go out there and just meddle around in the court system there in Oregon unless you have backing, unless you have friends who will come with you and, you know, record this, the system. You want to get that on video. Surreptitiously record audio anyway. <laughs> just, you that know. That is not legal advice. Go in. Derek J. doesn't know what the law is in Oregon, do yeah, you? But, no, but okay. you can you can just do it because, you know, <laughs> you've got a phone. You've got some way to record. It's easy to do in 2015. And then at least you've got your own record. You know, I'm not saying to go release it and put it on the Internet and incriminate yourself. Yeah, but that would be bad. At least you've got your invisible friend keeping an objective record of what's going on there. So if you do get abducted or arrested or abused, you've got that on record. Or come to New Hampshire and join the fun here where activists are in court every month, basically, here in Keene. Uh, J.P. Freeman's going to court this week. He just left Boston. New Hampshire. What? The what? caller just left New Hampshire. Oh, the oh, caller. Yeah. I thought you meant J.P. Freeman. <laughs> um, so J.P. Freeman's going to court against Boston Strong, who's one of the local haters. <laughs> it's more of a personal conflict between the two of them. But there's criminal charges against uh, Shire Dude next month in Manchester. Whoa. And uh, so, you know, I think we're going to, some of us will be going out to support him on that. Criminal charges? Are they parking charges? Parking or? related, oh, okay. I think. Ooh. Some sort of tra- some sort of traffic. It might be okay. inspection. I, I don't really know what it is, but... It's his first time going to court in New Hampshire, oh, so I boy. think that'll be, uh, that'll be fun. He did go to the pretrial hearing and made a cool Shire Dude-esque video out of it, and it was really entertaining. If you haven't seen that, I'll see if I can dig it up and then maybe post it to our Facebook That's and Twitter. That's a good Twitter. idea. Uh, so you can see that, because Shire Dude's a really creative guy, and you know when Shire Dude went to court, it was a lot of fun. So he, it should be really interesting to see him at an actual trial. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, and we will, of course, bring it to you over at freekeen.com. We'll continue with more Free Talk Live here in moments. You can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Speaking of court, Ross Ulbricht's going to be back in on Friday. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. Free Talk Live. That's all libertarians are saying is let's stop the violence. And really, when you put it in those terms, it sounds kind of liberal. Let's stop the violence. Sure, right? it's, a, it's a movement about peace and personal responsibility. That could very easily sound like, uh, when you use the word peace, sounds liberal. You know? Right. So if the first libertarian you ever meet or hear on the radio is just talking about making government smaller, I can totally understand why you would get confused and think that it's you know, just a bunch of ultra-right wingers. That's one of the reasons why I kind of shy away from labeling myself that way. Often we get terms like radical used towards us, mm-hmm. but... Uh, radical, really? Peace, personal responsibility, voluntary interaction between individuals? That's radical? 
I'll tell you what's radical. Radical's using a gun and a bunch of guys in, in armored suits with helmets to enforce your will on people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimesPree.com. That's VictimlessCrimesPree.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free here. Bring up whatever's on your mind at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype. Skype on in here at username lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian, Derek J, and Mark. And don't forget to join Derek J over on his website, thederekj.com. Now, you've been off for a week. You've been uh, vacationing. I imagine not doing very many blog posts. No. Okay. But I am still talking about the school outreach video, which is doing quite well. I'm glad yeah? to see. Yeah. Where was I? I haven't looked in the last few days. What, what, are you, what are you up to? I don't know. I haven't looked. It was either, several hundred was, when I checked last. Which yeah, in the good. first 24 hours, for it to get about 500 was pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, so go and follow the latest about Derek J. He's got uh, multiple radio shows that he does, including Cop Block Radio, which I imagine your radio shows are going to be going uh, again this week. You'll be live. Yep, I'm back tonight with uh, Cop Block Radio. That's uh, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern. And on then. Tomorrow, Flaming Freedom returns with new co-hosts. I want to hear more about that. But go to lrn.fm if you want to hear those live. Uh, and then uh, Flaming Freedom is like the most gay, libertarian show out there. One of the gayest it's shows the out there, period. It's the only gay anarchist show there is, I'm sure. Now, uh, yeah, I heard Dale has quit the show. That's right. For the second time. This is the real time. I feel like it's been more like three or four times at Yeah, this you're point. right. <laughs> But you're keeping it going because this is your show now. This flame is alive. All right, good. All right, do you want to tell us who the the, the new co-hosts are? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, several of them. One uh, we've chosen from another LRN show, Seditious Sirens, mm-hmm. and Leverett, the okay. rebel mistress, will be joining us. She's by, right? Yep. Okay. Shire Dude is also, also joining us, yes, mm-hmm. as a Flaming Freedom co-host. Oh, that's so great. And many <laughs> more, so stay tuned. Flamingfreedom.com. That's very exciting. And uh, thederekj.com as well. Have you or someone you know been a victim of electronic pickpocketing? If not, are you wondering what electronic pickpocketing is? Well, thieves can pass near you with an RFID scanner and read the data on your chips 
in your credit and debit cards. There's RFID chips in some of those credit and debit cards. The thieves then use that information to charge your credit cards for their purchases or, worse yet, compromise your identity. Now, thanks to ID Stronghold, there's an easy way to prevent electronic pickpocketing from happening to you. ID Stronghold has been making products to block electronic pickpocketing since 2005, and some of their most loyal customers are military personnel that place a high value on personal security. Now, you can also have that same protection in the form of great leather RFID blocking wallets made by ID Stronghold. That's right. All you need to do is switch your wallet for a quality leather wallet from ID Stronghold with built-in protection against electronic pickpocketing. Visit IDStronghold.com, and you can see their huge selection of his and hers wallets. That's IDStronghold.com, and tell them Ian Freeman sent you. IDStronghold.com. Uh, so last night, Derek J., you weren't here for this, but we read the statement. Uh, there was a letter that was written by Ross Ulbricht to the judge in his case, and I'm mm. sure you've seen the the headlines about it. Uh, you're relatively connected in the Bitcoin community, and of course, Ross Ulbricht, for those that don't know, he is the man who's accused and has now been found guilty of running the Silk Road, the underground infamous drug marketplace that uh, went to trial earlier this year in federal court. He's now facing 20 years to life in prison and will be sentenced on Friday morning uh, at the New York District Court. So now is the time when he and his attorneys are putting in you know, motions and evidence into the sentencing hearing where people are essentially begging for mercy uh, with this tyrannical woman who is in charge of this particular courthouse who has ruled time and time again against Ross, against his attorneys, has suppressed evidence, suppressed critical information about like the uh, DEA agent who is totally corrupt that was basically uh, on the take during the case. And I don't want to get into all the details on that, but there's so much detail to the story. It's uh, it's hard to gloss over it because it just seems like so much that is important about it that we should talk about. But anyway, is, just, is it all up to that one judge, Catherine Forrest? It's just one person decides she's the, decider. the fate of this person. For the rest of his life, possibly. Correct. She will take uh, the recommendation from the prosecution, which, I don't know, this is interesting. I was surprised. Prosecutors are not asking for life in this case. Okay, Prosecutors wow. are, they're asking for a lot more than the minimum, which is 20 years. So they're not exactly being nicey-nice or anything like that. But I was a little surprised when they didn't ask for life. The minimum is 20 years. They're not asking for 20 years. The, correct. Right. They're asking for significantly more than the minimum. They're not specifying an amount of years. They're just saying it should be a lot more than the minimum. So they, oh. you know, they could be asking for 50, 40, I don't know. They're not giving an exact number. And so those 25 the, is more. Maybe that's all they mean. Hopefully they're just Maybe. going light. Uh, I feel like they, they want it pretty heavy, though, unfortunately. They are uh, they want to send a message with so, Ross. But Ross wrote his own letter to the judge. Hey, can everyone else write letters to the judge? Is that it's too really? late, probably, but yeah, yeah but you there could are, have. They, supposedly they got a lot of 100. letters. 100. Uh, the the okay. defense attorney turned in 100 letters, including some from Ross's cellmates in uh, wow. the holding cell. So lots of different people. It's kind people. of interesting. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's an interesting way to go is to get uh, your cellmates to, uh, to write letters. I I I don't know how that would have necessarily gone had uh, you know I'd seen other people do it's that in prison. <laughs> it's hard to say that uh, anything's going to affect what this judge thinks. I mean, she she's one of those people who seems like she's already got her mind made up. She's she's been certainly biased. seemed to about the um, about uh, guilt or innocence, but I. I'm sort of of the opinion that there's really no operable difference between 20 years and 35 years in prison. I don't think that the media is going to say, dear God, they've just let this kingpin go on a, with a slap on the wrist if he gets 20 years in prison. It seems like plenty for a man who, at this point, um, has been convicted of doing no he, harm to anyone. He ran a website. That's what he's been convicted of doing. Anyway, this is the letter that was uh, written to you, Mark, by uh, Ron Seaver. He says, my name's Ron Seaver. I've been listening to Free Talk Live on AM 1150 in Marion, Illinois. That's Monster Radio 1150, great station, uh, for a couple of years now. He says, I believe my mother contacted you via email a couple of weeks ago informing you I intended to write and again to inform you of the difficulty I was having in doing so. More on that later in this letter. I'm writing primarily to offer some comments on the Ross Ulbricht situation. To share my experience going through this federal justice system, and he puts justice in quotes, and talk a little bit about this special prison unit that I've been housed in for the last two and a half years. 
Let me start by saying that Ross Ulbricht was doomed the moment he was arrested by federal agents. This is not a cheery letter. The federal system has a 97% conviction rate because almost everyone who goes through it takes a plea deal. Because if you go to trial, you pretty much get the maximum amount of time that you can get. From if, what I can tell, that's uh, pretty true with just about every court system. And, the, um, you know, actually it may be higher because people tend to um, higher on local levels because the sentences tend to be lower. So they'll just take them and, and get out of there. But, uh, yeah, I, most people take their the plea bargain and that's it. Now, I actually got a second letter from a different person in the same prison about Ross Ulbricht. And okay. he says the exact same thing. So just to save time, I'm not going to read the second letter, but it's a little bit longer, and he says Ross is screwed. Uh, He says, if Ross Ulbricht doesn't get sentenced to life in prison, I will be shocked. This is a man who's in federal prison. Yep. He says, but now the news about these agents stealing bitcoins, what I mentioned before, the uh, DEA agent and a Secret Service agent, were totally corrupt, and they're now facing felony charges. Uh, He says, but the news about this and trying to sell Ross Ulbricht information has now come out. After going through this system myself and knowing what it's done to other people in prison with me, I don't think that news will change anything for Ross. These people aren't going to want to grant him a retrial because it might show the public that the system isn't the shining beacon of justice that they make it out to be. But, Uh, I mean, anybody who looks at it would see that already, that, uh, you know, these agents that are in on this uh, are getting, there's charges against them, and still... Uh, you know, Albrecht is uh, convicted on bad evidence. Yeah, but most people who look at this case aren't going to look deeply into it. They, you know, if they see the headlines, most people don't look deeply at anything. Right. So if they see the headlines about Ross being sentenced, they're just going to say, "Ah, drug dealer got what he deserved." They're not going to look into the details of the case. Eighth, and you'd have to look a little deeper to see the news probably about the DEA agents. I highly doubt that's going to be in the summary of the sentencing for Friday. 855 450 free. We'll continue with the letter from Federal Prison about Ross's chances on Friday and a little bit more about what it's like to be in what's called the Communications Management Unit. Sounds like fun? No. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. 
Here's a breaking medical legal alert. Attention, users of the diabetes drug Actos. If you or a loved one has taken Actos, then developed bladder cancer, or if a loved one has died from bladder cancer after taking Actos, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation from the pharmaceutical giants who made these drugs. Our experienced attorneys are dedicated to help you get the money you're entitled to, but time may be running out on this opportunity. So you must call today. The information is free. There are no fees unless we win your case. If you or a loved one has developed bladder cancer or something worse, after taking the diabetes drug Actos, call right now and learn your legal rights. This is an advertisement not valid in all states. I am a paid non-attorney spokesperson. Call the tort attorneys 24-7 right now. 800-430-7924. 800-430-7924. That's 800-430-7924. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And uh, we're talking about a letter written to us from a federal inmate. In Marion, Illinois, and Mark is yelling at me during the breaks because— uh, You're yelling too! I, well, yeah, because you're yelling at me. You started yelling at me, so you're going to get it back in your face. I asked you to answer a question. Because this guy wrote his name in this letter, and now Mark is all upset because I read this federal prisoner's name on the radio. Yeah, I don't see any benefit. Here's Answer this question on the radio if, you, uh, if, if you'd like. Who benefits, besides some crazy vindictive prison guard— from you reading that name, I don't on the know air. what you mean by that because the prison guard already knows about this letter. They read it because he's in the communications management unit, as you'll learn about in the letter later, which means they read every letter that comes out of there and they will prevent letters from coming out that reveal certain information that the prisoners are not allowed to discuss. I just think it's unwise to give the guy's name because we don't know what the kind of ramifications can be of reading okay. this on the air. I like think it's what? wise. What are you afraid of? Is he going to get beat up by one of the guards? Is that what you're suggesting? Confinement, the inability to write out letters. Um, why he would already the fact, has that. Why, excuse me, Mark, but why would the fact that he uh, wrote this letter and it was read on the air somehow get him in greater trouble because they, uh, you know, beyond the fact that they already knew he was sending a letter to a radio show? Look, you're asking for th uh, okay. I spent eight and a half years of my life in prison, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, they don't necessarily do things that make sense. You, yeah. when you guys went to jail, you had short little tiny sentences, and you could have done them all in the box if that's what you wanted to do. He's already in a higher level of confinement than mo normal inmates because he's in the communications unit, and he could very well end up in a higher level of confinement over this. I don't know what's going to happen. But all I've said is is that, you know, I'm suggesting caution. You are saying, why should this I use caution? This guy's the one in prison. He knows what it's like in there. He knows what he's getting punished for. He knows what people on the cell block get punished for. He knows the pettiness of these guards. If he was willing to take the risk of sending out this information, then I am willing to read it on the air. Yes, I understand that, and you are reading it on the air. Why don't you let him decide rather than you try to be uh, protecting this guy somehow? Well, I sincerely hope it doesn't say somewhere in that letter that, uh, you know, hey, it'd probably be better if you didn't read this on the air, read my well, name on the air. we're going to read through the whole thing, Mark, so you'll find out. Again, you don't want us to read your name on the air. Don't send a letter to a radio show and don't sign it with your real name. How about that? Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Will, will you feel bad if the guy ends up in confinement? No. 
No. He's the one who made the choice to write to a radio show. It's not my responsibility. I am not responsible for what the guards do in this jail. Yeah, and it's not like Ian is sending this guy to worse consequences. It's not like he's calling up the jail and saying, hey, throw this guy in the hole and, and re- wrestle him around a little bit, too. He's, he's not just saying reading that, no. a letter. I understand. It's not just reading a letter. Look, 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 I think you should read the letter. Listen to my, the words coming out of my mouth. Uh-huh. It's a really great idea to read this letter. Yeah. There was no reason, not one, not a single bit of value to giving the man's name. That's sure there the is. point. Maybe somebody wants to write to him. There you go. It makes him real. Yeah, that's right. It's not just, you, you know, could have some given, name. You could, okay, there's all kinds of things. We'll call him Dave. You know, if you want to make the man real, you don't have but to give his full name. that wouldn't be the truth. His name's Ron Seaver. Yeah, I know. 855-450-FREE. You are trying to protect this guy, and it doesn't make any sense. He's familiar with the consequences for writing out of this particular He's certainly going to get familiar with the consequences, isn't he? Couldn't they have swapped the letter before it left the jail, they read all of these things. That's correct. So they could have said, oh, he's saying bad stuff. We don't want that that to get out. Let's uh, not let this letter be sent. That's exactly what they could do. In fact, there's certain information that he has to keep out of this specifically to avoid uh, that sort of trouble. trouble. And so he knows what, you know, he's skirting the line here or whatever he's doing. He knows he's been there two and a half years. He knows what he can send and what he can't send. And obviously, he's comfortable, Mark, sending this information to a radio show, which might just read it on the air. Here's a news flash to everybody listening, whether you're in federal prison or not. If you call the show, we're going to put you on the radio. If you give your <laughs> real name out over the airwaves, we're not going to stop you from doing that. We might say, well, you don't need to give us your whole name. And we usually will say that if somebody does call in that way. Um, but, you know, that's your choice. And if you want to write us a letter or an email or something like that, that, if, by the way, we rarely read letters or emails on the no, air. No, almost never. But if we ever do and you want to sign it with your full name, then that's your choice. If you take I read that it risk. on the air, I'm not going to give your full name. Right. I never do that. There you go. So going on here. Because I think it is unwise. That's why I'm advising you. Because you're paranoid. I'm not the one in federal prison that's going to sit in confinement for 90 days. If he was going to face consequences like that, the consequences would have come when it reached the censors. And they would have punished him then, Mark. Oh, my God. This He's sending this to a radio show? We can't allow that. Let's punish him. And I think it kind of makes more sense to give a full name as time goes on because... People will have more of an opportunity to connect with these people, whereas before, if you were just reading it over the radio in the 30s, you might just want to say, oh, Dave from Oklahoma writes, whatever, and people are never going to get in contact with them. Yeah, so going on here, if you want to share your thoughts uh, on this, are you super paranoid like Mark? Uh, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Look, you know, I know we haven't been to prison, Mark, Derek J. and I, but we have gone to jail. We've been confined, and we've been subjected to some petty guard BS, okay? So I understand that that stuff exists, and I understand that sadistic guards exist, and further, some guards could actually hurt somebody for whatever arbitrary reason they want to. But the idea that some guard is going to decide to punish this man because the guard happened to hear us read a letter on the air that he knew was being sent, or that some guard in the facility knew was being sent from that facility— seems so highly unlikely and he obviously thinks it's unlikely because he didn't say hey don't read my name on the air okay so well, you claim not here. to actually know that there's five pages there. i've read the letter and i don't Me recall too. that i don't either okay it doesn't appear in the beginning or the end and if it's not in either of those places it probably doesn't appear uh in the letter anywhere did they read outgoing mail when you were in prison? They had the opportunity to read outgoing mail if that's what they wanted to do but uh you know all mail had to be put in uh sort of unsealed so uh, I was under the impression my outgoing mail was not read. Not at Cheshire, not at the jail that you and I were in. The, that comes, or at least supposedly, the, their policy is allegedly that they do not read the mail. They put a stamp on the back of every envelope that states that. So I don't know whether I believe it, but that's their policy. Going on here with Ron's email, or his, uh, his letter rather, because you can email from federal prison, by the way. In this case, it's handwritten. So he's saying that he expects Ross Ulbricht is going to get the full life sentence. He says anything less than life, he'll be shocked. Uh, He goes on here and says that uh, after going through this system myself, 
And knowing what it's done to other people in prison with me, I don't think that the news about the corrupt DEA agent will change anything for Ross. These people are not going to grant him a retrial. Uh, he says, I don't know what Ross was thinking when he stayed in the country while he ran the website. He could have went anywhere in the world with all the money that he was making, but he didn't. Maybe he was overconfident because of the nature of Tor. I don't know. I do know that by staying in this country while running a website of that nature, he was just begging to end up in the exact situation he now finds himself in. But I don't want to harp on Ross too much. I agree with some of what he was doing with the website. I won't say much more than that because prison staff read my letters and can use things that I write against me. I will say that the drug laws that Ross broke are archaic and oppressive and only serve to fill the coffers of many government agencies, like the prison systems. From top to bottom, the justice system in this country gorges itself on money. Oh, yeah. That's why the system is so hard to change. Will it ever change? There are inklings, but nothing significant enough to actually affect anything. You can see by everything the agents, prosecutor, and judge in Ross's case, everything they did that this case is what we're up against. Now, let me talk a little bit about my experience in this system. I had never been arrested in my life, let alone had a traffic ticket before all of this happened to me. Wow, not even a traffic ticket and he's nope. in federal prison? Yeah, for a long time. I never knew how bad this system was until I went through it. I think that's why people seem to have faith in the court system, because they usually don't go through it outside of maybe a traffic ticket or something along those lines. Anyway, I had a computer crime and was arrested after the execution of a search warrant that had been issued over eight months after the supposed crime occurred. No other crime occurred during those eight months, but the judge in the appeals court decided that the staleness of evidence doesn't apply to computer crimes because of the nature of computers to hold evidence for long periods of time and can be retrieved by forensic specialists. My guideline points were also jacked up by relevant conduct added to my pre-sentence report. It was argued over at my sentencing, it was argued over at my sentencing, but the government can use hearsay to prove relevant conduct so my lawyer's objections are overruled. I was looking at 15 to 40 years and was given 35. Jeez. No one died in my case. No one was hurt. But now I must spend roughly a third of my life in prison. This is singularly the worst experience of my life. You know, you really wonder, what's the, what's the difference between 15 years and 35 when it comes to... Uh, you know, victims. He, he claims there is no victim. Um, but what, you know, I mean, are they really better served by that? It just doesn't seem like it. 15 years is a long darn time to be in prison. He says it's the worst experience of his life. We'll tell you more about uh, what he has to say here in moments. 855 450 free. And he may be in a similar wing that Ross Ulbricht could end up in. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Watching the game again, I thought you were booking our vacation hotel. Done. What? We're staying in America's Best Value Inn, and I scored a triple play when I joined their free value club. Really? You get 15% off, a room upgrade, and late checkout when available, plus free Wi-Fi and continental breakfast at most of their 1,000 hotels. Wow, that really is a slam dunk. Uh, home run, honey. I think you mean home run. Score big this summer at America's Best Value Inn at abvi.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 27th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,185 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $240. Antiwar.com reports, speaking to reporters yesterday at the White House, President Obama demanded that Congress renew Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act before the expiration on Monday. Obama declared this needs to get done, praising the House for its approval of the USA Freedom Act, a watered-down reform bill, and saying the Senate needs to approve it as well. Section 215 is being used as the pretext for the NSA surveillance of the American public, and Obama insisted that allowing the surveillance to lapse would endanger the public. The White House is reiterating there is no plan B to keep the surveillance going if Congress does not give them the bill they want, though they similarly made this claim last week and the Senate still failed to pass the bill. The Senate needed 60 votes for a procedural vote on the USA Freedom Act and got 57 on Saturday. They then went into a holiday recess. The Senate is planning a Sunday session this upcoming week to try to vote again at the last minute, but despite heavy lobbying from the administration and pro-surveillance congressional leadership, it is unclear how they will secure additional votes. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a storm system triggered flash flood watches and warnings across seven states on Tuesday that killed 14 people and brought historic flooding to Houston. According to the city's emergency management coordinator, Rick Flanagan, up to eight inches of rain fell on Houston in less than 24 hours. More than 80,000 people were without power and schools were closed. Flood watches and warnings were in effect Tuesday in parts of Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Louisiana, and Mississippi. At least 14 people had been killed and 16 missing due to the severe weather since Saturday in Oklahoma and Texas. At least one person in each state is suspected of being killed by tornadoes. Officials in San Marcos and Hayes County, Texas said more than 400 homes had been washed away. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Charter Communications, seeking to remake the U.S. cable television industry by acquiring larger rival Time Warner Cable for $56 billion, will try to skirt the regulatory obstacles that sunk the earlier bid by Comcast for Time Warner. The combined company would control a big swath of the cable and internet markets, making a huge step towards industry consolidation, long advocated by cable pioneer John Malone, Charter's biggest shareholder. But before that can happen, the Federal Communications Commission will look to see how American consumers would benefit if the deal were to be approved, that according to agency chairman Tom Wheeler. The agreement is the latest example of how cable companies are grappling with the declining subscriber numbers as viewers shift to cheaper and more flexible streaming services offered by Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and others. Even premium cable network HBO, owned by Time Warner Cable's former parent, recently started a standalone streaming service. Charter and others have been beefing up their higher margin internet business through consolidation and partnerships to offset TV subscriber losses. The merged company would still be smaller than Comcast, which serves about one-third of U.S. broadband users, said analyst Craig Moffitt in a note to clients. 
He added that one has to be sober about genuine risk that this deal could still be rejected. Still, experts said this transaction is different enough from the scuttled Comcast takeover that it is likely to win regulatory approval with certain conditions. Executives from Charter and Time Warner Cable said concerns were overblown that the deal could face the same opposition as the Comcast takeover bid. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a groundbreaking study on anxiety disorders published this week in the New England Journal of Medicine, researchers have discovered that feelings of anxiety can be completely resolved as long as people think about them real hard. After studying subjects with mild to chronic anxiety disorders, we found that the best way to overcome mental stress is to isolate the root of the anxiety, analyze it from every possible angle, and then think about it nonstop until it completely disappears. Researchers worked with numerous subjects in the middle of high stress scenarios and said the key to overcoming anxiety is to start by focusing on a minor problem, list everything that can go wrong in the worst case scenario, and then repeat that list in your head 200 times. After anywhere between three to six hours of perpetually torturing yourself over things outside of your control, all feelings of anxiety will completely disappear and you can finally enjoy the remainder of your day. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE. If you'd like, you can bring up anything you want. Coming up, a woman's going to jail for her son's truancy, meaning that uh, he skipped school, at least as I understand it. I haven't read the story. Derek J. has that. He'll be sharing with us here in a little bit. I think, Mark, you said you had the same one. Uh, So we'll definitely get into that here at some point tonight. We're talking about the looming sentencing for Ross Ulbricht. He's the man accused of running the Silk Road His sentencing is coming up on Friday, I presume the morning, but I don't know exactly what time, sometime Friday, uh, in federal district court in Manhattan, and he's looking at life in prison for running a website. And we're reading a a letter, handwritten letter, sent to us, it's probably been well over a month now since this has been sent to us, but uh, from federal prison, from the, uh, the federal prison in Marion, Illinois, where we're on the air on Monster Radio 1150 there, on a regular basis, great station. And uh, he says that this is the worst experience of his life being in federal prison. He never even had a a traffic ticket prior to this experience of his, this sort of happening to him. And he is in what is called the communications management unit. He'll talk about what that means here in a little bit. Um, And he says that Ross is screwed because anybody that doesn't take a plea deal almost always, he says, gets the maximum sentence possible. Uh, in a federal case in the federal court system. So we're going to continue with that. Maybe you've got comments, whether it's on Ross Ulbricht, the Silk Road, federal prison, whatever you would like to discuss, you can share them with us here at 855-450-FREE. We're on uh, page two here on this uh, handwritten letter, uh, the very end of it. He says, this is singularly the worst experience of my life. Every day I fear for my life because of this environment and the people in it. Now, sure, there are some decent people in prison, but prison changes everyone, and even the most decent can turn violent with no warning at all. Every day, my family and I are gouged as I try to support myself in here. No item is too small for the government to overcharge on. They've really gotten bad on this. It would it <laughs> it, it didn't used to be this way, um, but uh, they're they're crazy. It's crazy on basically communication. They know you want to talk to your family. They call communication a right uh, of inmates. It's one of the few rights that inmates have, but. You know, when they talk about, they're really just talking about letters from the U.S. Postal Service um, at that point. And so, if you want to talk to, talk to mom on the phone or send an email, money, money, money. In fact, he says phone calls uh, phone phone calls are the worst. It cost me five dollars and fifteen cents for one fifteen minute phone call to talk to my two children. Prison officials always talk about having contact with family so important for inmates and how it helps recidivism rates. Yet they make it so expensive by contra- uh, contracting phone service out to these large corporations who tack on so many fees to boost the price of phone calls that I'm surprised anyone can afford to make them regularly. Better not get an incident report either because phone calls, email, and visits are the first thing staff will take away as punishment. I won't even get into the horrible lack of education opportunities, poor quality of food, atrocious medical care, 
or staff incompetence. I can tell you that uh, it didn't. It also didn't used to be that way as far as keeping uh, people out of, um, you know, as far as visits go, keeping you away from your family. That could happen, but only if you were sentenced to something. And it was relatively rare because what uh, the staff understood was is that people were driving all across the state, in, in his case, all across the nation, they're coming to visit. Um, and they weren't turning people, they would try very hard not to turn people away at the door. Whereas it's gotten much, much more common for prisons just to, you know, essentially punish the family as well as the inmate. Uh, because it's a big deal to, to head on out there to fed, federal prison in Marion, Illinois. Maybe you're coming from hundreds or thousands of miles away. And then it's like, oh yeah, sorry, that's just not going to work out today. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, in my experience, prison guards have no problem whatsoever telling people no. You know, they don't care if you've flown across the country or whatever. Well, my ex experience is from the late 80s and yeah. mid 90s. Uh, so going on here, uh, he says, this letter would be way too long if I went into any of those things. My stepfather has already passed away since I've been in prison. My mother's health gets worse every day with her myriad of health problems. I have two older sisters I barely hear from. I lost all my friends. I will probably never see my children again because they're Canadian and live in Canada and good luck getting across the border as a felon. Not only that, I'll be 60 years old when I get out. What am I supposed to do with my life then? Where will I live? How am I going to get a job? Does he say how old he is now? Uh, well, he's been in two and a half years, sentenced to 35 years, so I suspect he is in his mid to late 20s. Okay. Would be my guess. Um, going on here, he says, uh, how am I going to get a job? These are some of the questions I struggle with every day. This is what prison does to people. It's supposed to rehabilitate a person, but usually it just breaks them. I try to stay a decent person, but how long until I break? 35 years is a long time to maintain yourself in this system. I only hope that I can make it. The other thing I wanted to write about is the special unit I'm housed in. Now, the other guy who wrote, again, we got two letters from this prison. The other guy is also in this communications management unit. Uh, Yeesh. Yeah. He says it's called the communications management unit, or CMU for short. Unfortunately, I can't say much. Because staff may reject my mail if they think it's a threat to security. I only mention this unit to you because with all that Ross Ulbricht is charged with doing, there is a decent possibility he could end up in one of the two CMUs. Meaning that there are, sounds like, two CMUs across all the federal yeah, prisons. The right? So one of them being in Marion, Illinois, in this case. He says we are allowed only two 15-minute phone calls per week that must be scheduled. Because all calls are live monitored by a counterterrorism unit. All emails are read by the CTU before being sent out. All letters, or C CTU? I thought it was Communications Management. CMU. CTU. CTU must stand for something else. Okay. Uh, by the CTU, maybe some sort of division of the guards or something like that. All letters are scanned and approved. Counterterrorism unit? There, thank you. Yeah, he did mention that earlier. Counterterrorism unit. So the counter, he's in the communications management unit, which is facilitated by the counterterrorism unit. Got it. All letters are scanned and approved by the CTU before being mailed. He's got Canadian children. For God's sakes, he sounds like a terrorist. Visiting <laughs> rights in this unit are worse. By the way, he was he's not in for any kind of terrorism charge or anything like that. It's basically a, a porn charge, essentially, from what I understand. Visiting rights in this unit are worse than visiting rights at the Supermax in Florence, Colorado. You can Google Communications Management Unit for more information, though I don't know how much you'll find because the CMU is a dirty secret of the Bureau of Prisons. I also mention the CMU to you because Ed Brown spent some time in here. Hmm. Now, Ed Brown, for those who don't know, is a tax uh, freedom advocate who was put in prison basically for the rest of his life because he was el you know, fairly elderly when he was locked up. Uh, you and I, Mark, we actually went over to uh, Ed Brown's house. Yeah, we did. Uh, back when he was under siege by the federal government. He was actually in the cell next to me until he got in his third or fourth fight, and they finally let him out. Can you imagine people fighting with this old man? I mean, he was probably no. 70 or in his very late 60s. He's 70 now, I can assure you. 70-something. Do you think this was other inmates fighting with Ed? I imagine he's. that's what he's suggesting here, yeah. Yikes. Uh, don't know what happened to him after that because the unit is completely separated from the rest of the prison. Maybe he ended up transferring to that new federal prison in, called New Berlin in New Hampshire. So there's an update on him for you. Now for the difficulties I was having writing to you. I had another letter written and tried to mail it out marked Special Media Mail, which means I can seal the letter when I mail it. 
It was given back to me, and I was told that Free Talk Live isn't a national news organization, so I couldn't mark it as special media mail. I appealed it and was told that Free Talk Live is an opinion show, not news. And, yeah, that's probably true. We break stories now and then. We do break some news, but it... it Probably is more accurate that we're not really a news show. Nonetheless, the you know jail guards will use every excuse they possibly can to restrict your freedoms, what few freedoms you have left. Uh, he says, I know how much the government hates it when people have an opinion, especially when it doesn't conform with theirs. But by that definition, any news program is opinion. They bring on politicians, experts, or other talking heads to give their opinion of what's being reported on. At least Free Talk Live lets anyone call in and give their opinion about the news you guys are talking about. So anyway, I wrote this letter instead while I take my appeal to the warden, which can take a month to hear back from about it. I'll take it all the way to court if I have to, which is awesome. Thanks for doing that, (laughs) He's got the time, I guess. Yep. Finally, I just want to say that I enjoy the show and listen almost every night but Sunday. I don't always agree with everything that's said or talked about on the show, but I'm happy and appreciate that there is a forum for people to discuss these ideas. Take care, and thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy day to read this. And that's from Ron Seaver, S-E-I-V-E-R, for those of you who would like to send Ron some mail. You laugh, Mark, but some people, you know, might appreciate having people get send them mail. I know I did when I was in jail. Derek, you did Absolutely. as well. It's the only thing keeping you connected. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Warning. If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station. Because there's an alternative to bankruptcy, and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We've got time for you if you want to join us here at 855-450 Free. Whether you want to talk about being in prison, uh, we just heard from a federal inmate in a communications management unit, of which there are two in all of the United States, according to him. And he thinks Ross Ulbricht may end up in one of these communications management units. It sounds like the kind of place where they'll put anybody who's got some sort of computer-related crime in and and or terrorism-related uh, crime. Because he says that the counterterrorism unit screens all of the mail that is sent out from the communications management unit. They also are limited to two 15-minute phone calls per week. Uh, that are monitored actively. Normally, when you're in jail, you know there's a chance they could be listening. Yeah, like you know, they've got only they only have so many guards. They only they have so many phones and so many prisoners. They don't have enough guards. Probably. They're certainly recording. Yeah, they're certainly recording everything. But as far as live monitoring is concerned, you know, they may or may not be listening to you depending on how interesting you are to them. Uh, basically, what they're saying here is that all of these people are interesting to them enough to where they are absolutely, definitely monitoring every single word that comes out of their mouths on a phone. In this particular unit, they're monitoring every word that comes out of the uh, the mailbox or that comes, you know, in the form of letters uh, that's going out of the unit. Whereas Derek J, when you were uh, and I were in jail, the jail's policy there was that they would not read outgoing mail. So, for instance, I sent a password to you, Mark, uh, to some of the you know stuff that you needed to access here in the studio. I sent that knowing, expecting that the guards were not going to actually be able to read that. I, I sealed the envelope. And it came to you sealed without any evidence of, uh, of tampering on it. Yep. So that's a totally different world than this Federal Communications Management Unit where absolutely everything is monitored. Uh, we're going to continue here in moments. You can share your thoughts. But first, I want to tell you, or Mark will tell you, about Fort Galt. Yeah, what Fort Galt is, is it's a, uh, it's a daring condominium project down in Chile. Now, they're not going to make your average condominium uh, complex with a bunch of, you know, 1,500 square foot housing units. What they're doing is, is they're making small units where that are essentially meant for sleeping or maybe studying. And then they have a bunch of uh, communal areas. So like kitchens and uh, coffee shops and restaurant and these sorts of things. And the idea is, is that entrepreneurs and uh, small business owners, freelancers, young professionals, and their families can sort of work together um, and collaborate on ideas and you know it's the, the only true requirement is you're self-sufficient and flexible enough to relocate without depending on others to provide for you it's a it's a really great idea i think it's kind of interesting go to fortgalt.com they're adding new content all the time i know they're working now on uh, the very specifics as to you know where the units are going to go and who's got what and, and that kind of thing and you can get involved fortgalt.com and uh They've they've got really great the the videos and the pictures there are quite awesome. You don't have to make any uh, commitments really. Um, you you commit, but you don't have to lay out a whole bunch of money um, right right away. So it's fortgalt.com. Galt is spelled G A L T, as in John Galt. Galt.com. Fortgalt.com. Yeah, fortgalt.com. Uh, so our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And so we're going to change gears here unless you guys have more comments on federal prisons, communications management units, and that sort of thing. No, I think I said. So, uh, got some school-related stuff. Uh, first off, Derek J., you and Mark both had the same story tonight uh, about a woman who is going to jail because of her son's actions. Yeah, that that's right. right. 
He's an honor roll student, and this is happening in Georgia. A mother and substitute teacher, Julie Giles, was arrested this week, which is now last week, according to this article from the freethoughtproject.com, because her son had too many unexcused absences from government wow. school. How many is too many? I, we we f- might find that out. We will find out soon. I think it's three. Writing on her Facebook page before turning herself in, Giles said, quote, If anyone feels the need to go public with this, feel free to do so. The facts are Sam originally had what they considered 12 unexcused absences. Six are allowed per year, so he had six more than acceptable. But the doctor reissued three excuses that Sam didn't turn in. Hmm. So basically, I'm being arrested for three days. Got it. So he missed three days of school. Which he had notes for, but he didn't give to the bureaucrats. Right. Okay. Well, no, it seems like uh, he is being, she's being punished for six because he had a note for three I see. that he didn't turn in. So uh, she also noted that her child had all A's and B's in school. If you can get A's and B's in school, why do you need to be there? Like if you, if you can be absent for X number of days and still pull off A's and B's, it's really just for the image, right? Like, they don't want it to look like you don't need to be there. You're being right. denied an education, Ian. If you're they not there re- for all 180 days. <laughs> they have rules. <laughs> rules. You are being denied something. Hmm. And uh, too many days, and it's a jail. So just Apparently. be careful. You've got to walk that line very carefully. <laughs> WTOC's Don Lagana contacted Screven County Schools Superintendent William Bland. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> what a great poly- uh, yeah, bureaucrat, bureaucrat name. name. Who told uh, him that the school district is working within the law. Yeah. It's important to these children, this is a quote, it's important for these children to be in school. And I think the courts <laughs> recognize that. <laughs> it's said. so important That will destroy your parents' ability to actually provide for you by putting them in jail because school is more important than anything. It's no surprise that homeschooling is uh, up by 63% in the last decade. Yeah, I wonder what this lady's going to think about uh, government school after serving a little time in jail. Well, guys, see, the state owns your kids, of course. You, because this couldn't it couldn't be argued any other way that the state would have no authority to just say okay well you you didn't put your kid where i want you to now you get punished well you could uh, send the kid to private school or homeschool them and uh, i i think it's it's more accurate in this circumstance that the government owns you or your property <laughs> well <laughs> yeah I mean, because you're forced to pay for the government school, you're not forced to send your kid there. If you do send your kid there, you're going to um, have to abide by their silly, silly rules. Um, I think as libertarians that all of us would say that any private school could come up with uh, rules for people attending and that uh, any parent that, you know, that if one of these private schools came up with a rule that what any parent that didn't had that had more than six unexcused absences per year had to sit in the broom closet for the next no. uh, for, for three. Why not? Because no one would consent to that. You'd Ex- get kicked absolutely. out of the school. You'd have some other kind of punishment. It wouldn't be go to jail. That doesn't help anybody. It doesn't serve anyone. Well, well, I agree with you generally that it doesn't serve people. That doesn't mean there aren't parents who don't want that, right? Like there are parents that send their kids to military academies because they've got serious punishments for things, right? Like it's a very regimented, supposedly, I've never been to one of these places, but, you know, supposedly a very regimented atmosphere where there is serious punishment for stuff. I thought this stuff never happened, and I used to play hooky a lot, and my mom would say— don't do that. They're going to throw me in jail, you know, if you don't go to school. You wow. Know? Wait, and she knew that there was a punishment for truancy, that she could go to jail if I didn't go. It's and so I didn't crazy. believe. I said, no way. That's That doesn't happen. Why Here, would it? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Why would she need to be punished for your choices? I mean, it's not like she can. Once you get to be a large enough person as a teenager, your mom can't hold you down. She can't keep you from going somewhere else. Well, Lagana learned during his investigation that several other parents have been convicted for the same offense at this school at oh, this year it. alone. All right, stand by. Uh, do we find out what her sentence is later on in the story as well? I'm curious to know for how long she has to go to jail on this one. We'll come back with more here in moments. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. 
If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here on the radio waves at 855-450 free. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And you can join Mark in real life coming up in July at Freedom Fest. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's July the 8th through the 11th at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Um, I'm really excited about going. This is one of the largest gatherings. This is the largest gathering of free minds in the world. This year, the theme is Discover the New American Dream. 
One of the things I'm excited about, probably the most exciting part of it, is that Paul Krugman is going to be debating Steve Moore. Now, Steve Moore is the Wall Street journalist, columnist, and he's the chief economist for the Heritage Foundation. So that's the, the sort of the red side. And the blue team, uh, Paul Krugman, is the Nobel Prize winning economist and New York Times columnist. Uh, he's gonna, they're going to be debating austerity versus stimulus, red state versus blue state, flat tax versus progressive tax. And this is only happening at uh, Freedom Fest. Lots of big names will be there. P Peter Thiel, uh, John Mackey, Harry Rosen, uh, Senator Mike Lee, Congressman Alan West, uh, Gro Grover Norquist, George Gilder, Glenn Beck, John Allison. It's a big, Dinesh D'Souza, um, worth mentioning. It's a big event, and you can get registered by going to freedomfest.com. And when you do, there's a an option to say you heard about it on Free Talk Live there. Uh, they, they actually had a radio option. They've added a Free Talk Live option. So it's uh, freedomfest.com. And uh, click that you heard, on, uh, heard it on Free Talk Live. And the, or you can uh, call the telephone number, 855-850-FREE. It's 855-850-FREE to register that way. So we're talking about the woman who is going to jail. Maybe. The way the story was written made it sound like she was reporting to jail. She was actually just turning herself in for an arrest. Uh, she's been processed. She's been booked. And now is facing court. So she's yet to be convicted of whatever this charge is. And I'm curious to know... What do they call this charge? Not being able to control your kid and force him to go to school? Misdemeanor? I mean, being what a delinquent or negligent parent, probably. Maybe. I mean, how? I mean, how are you supposed to force your kid to go to the government school if you've got a teenager who says, "Now, I'm not going." <laughs> and just walks out the door. What you're supposed to do is call, call the, the cops police. on your kid. Sick. That yeah. is sick. It's. I'm not saying it's not, but yeah. that's what the idea behind this is, is that either you're colluding with your child to uh, to stay away from school, you're causing your child to stay away from school, or you're going to you know, call the cops. Those are your three choices. So what else do we need to know about this story, Derek J? Well, the woman is home. She did uh, leave a post uh, I think on Facebook, saying, I am home. I was actually placed in ankle shackles. I was uh, told that doing so is procedure. I was respectful and followed directions. Sheriff Mike Kyle allowed me to leave after being booked and photographed without having to call a bail bondsman. I'll call tomorrow with a court date, she says. Thanks for the support. So, so she I got PR bail, as it's called, personal recognizance. Yeah. They just... You know, basically said, look, lady, you show up or else, you know, we're going to collect this amount of money from you next time. That kind and of now she has to defend herself in court. She's got these charges, which we still don't know what they are exactly, but then she'll have to defend against those. Hopefully yeah. they just get dropped. Well, they say here in this, I've got another story about this, crimefeed.com, where according to the sheriff, I believe it's the sheriff who said that here. Yeah, the local sheriff says it is likely she will receive probation. So... I presume he's saying that based on his experience of having seen, you said there were several other cases at this yeah. one school uh, of other parents being charged similarly. So he's probably seen these parents getting uh, convicted and getting sentenced and presuming they don't have a rap sheet. Uh, they're probably getting probation, which means that this woman is now you know, going to end up likely on probation, which of course means it's, it's incredibly easy to violate that probation. Uh, and then she'll go to jail if she violates the probation. It's funny the to idea. me because like public schools have banned corporal punishment as a, as a practice inside their schools, but it's not banned from outside the schools for the the parents. You know, if if you if your kid acts up in the school or or plays hooky too many times, they'll throw you in jail. They're, they'll end up which in jail. The guards have to, by definition, touch you in inappropriate places. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's going to be uh, a bad time. So, something that I thought um, I wanted to share that kind of goes back to you know, still school related um, in the, uh, the the situation that we've experienced down in Monadnock Regional Middle and High School, or where, where you and I, Derek J, have recently gone to do some outreach. Something I learned uh, is that they actually have a four-page registration form that a parent has to apparently fill out, and I guess it's on a yearly basis. I mean, I've never had kids, so I've never, you know, and if I did have kids, I wouldn't send them to government school, but apparently they want you to sign a form that basically waives all kinds of, you know, rights. Like, one of the things that it actually says in this form is, quote, 
I agree to allow the student to be recorded or photographed for public use by newspaper, radio, TV, and web. So it seems like when parents sign these forms, they are really turning their lives over to the state in a major way. And I find myself wondering, you know, what happens if you don't put yourself on the radar? I mean, then they don't even know your kid exists, right? I mean, could they really what – the, what are the odds they're going to come after a parent who never even, like – surfaces in the government school system like yeah. your, your son jack mark has never you've never filled out one of these registration no forms i've never filled out one of those forms. registered he's, your son with the state he's never gone to government school um so i would wonder you know if for instance i showed up in well the, the, the it's different for me because i'm on the radio right like so you know anybody could you know figure out that i've got a kid or whatever but if right. somebody you know who wasn't me on the radio was under certain certain circumstances just happens to live in your county um you know, there's, I don't think there's any way the government's going to know anything. I wouldn't there's think no, so either. There's not a system for checking up. It's basically um, all the, you know, it's all the government. Yeah, the, well, the government school system is, uh, you know, everything and all the problems that come along with it. It's this tax, uh, you know, this this sort of tax in your time, your energy, and your life that you get for participating in their middle class government welfare scheme, which is what government school is. Government school isn't intended to get poor people educations. If that was the case, then, well, I mean, we see what government schools for poor people look like. They're horrifying places that make, uh, you know, the DMZ look good. Um, so, you know, that's not what they're for. What they're for is for middle class people to sort of be able to say, hey, I'm getting something here. This is awesome. They're, they're uh, teachers union, uh, you know, organizations. If you want to get poor people educated, you give a scholarship, and what do they call a means-based scholarship, meaning it's based on sort of a person's need as opposed to their achievement. You give a means-based scholarship for people who are in the bottom 10%, 15%, or 20%, or whatever it is that you're trying to uh, to do, and then you tell everybody else, you make enough money, go pay for your own kid's education. But they're not trying to do that. Anybody from multi, multi, multi millionaires can send their kid to government school on down to people who are living in grass huts. You know, it doesn't make a difference what l a level of income you have. This is this sort of, you know, this this leveling playing field. Everybody gets a really crappy education, and we can bother all the parents. So if you've got experience you want to share, join us here at 855-450-FREE. I've actually got the full registration form up on the article at freekeen.com, which is entitled, Menandoc Regional School Principal Lies to Parents About Student Privacy. And the basic point there is that in that letter that I mentioned earlier in the show that was sent home to some parents after you and I, Derek J., went and handed out information at this school, they claimed we were violating your, their child's privacy rights. But yet right there in the registration form that every, every parent has to sign to send their kids to this school, it says that they can be recorded for public use by newspaper, radio, TV, and web. Yeah. Are you sure that every parent has to sign that? Yes. As I understand it, this is the registration form required by all of the schools in the Monadnock Regional SAU 93. Huh. And apparently it's a yearly thing. It would seem to me that a parent should have the right to opt out of the photographing thing. Like, Doesn't have if, that. If well, I were to send my have... kid there, I might want a stipulation that says, yeah, but he can't appear in the newspapers. I don't want that. Is, um, you could try crossing it out. What about yeah. the uh, the cameras in the school? How are you going to keep your kid from getting coming You're up not. on security cameras? Uh, so we'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts with us and your experiences as well. Maybe you've been a parent and you've refused to you know fill out one of these registration forms. What happened to you? Have you been threatened over your son or daughter not showing up at school and possibly charged criminally for that? One lady is 855-450 free and she's not the only one. 855-450-3733. More Free Talk Live. Up next, your call's welcome. The Atlas Society's Atlas Summit is just around the corner, June 18th through the 21st, right before Porkfest in Nashua, New Hampshire. Connect, grow, have fun with longtime objectivists and people just learning Ayn Rand's philosophy. There are discounts for students, locals, and one-day rates at atlassociety.org. The event is jam-packed with speakers. Come and be a part of the most important objectivist event of the year, the Atlas Summit, June 18th through the 21st, Nashua, New Hampshire, atlassociety.org. 20% off with coupon code FTL, atlassociety.org. Here's a good idea. 
When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Yuvia needed financing to grow her restaurant business, but her bank simply didn't understand. I was frustrated. Yuvia found On Deck business loans. On Deck did it for me. I called on Saturday and I had $50,000 in my account on Monday morning. How about the terms? Incredibly easy. It doesn't mess with your cash flow. On Deck changed everything. This company, On Deck, is going to be there for me. Was it a good move? I'm looking to increase sales probably 30%. Been in business for at least a year with 100000 plus in revenue? On Deck can get you 5000 to $250,000 in as little as one business day. And they're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. On Deck has opened up so many doors for me now. Truly, truly, the sky is the limit. I, I'm excited. Apply now at ondecklending.com or call 800-326-5430. 800-326-5430. 800-326-5430. Loan subject to lender approval. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn, you'll be inspired, you'll make new friends, you'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Got time for you if you want to join us here. 855 450 free plus more high school madness where a photographer has been threatened with suspension and a federal investigation over some pictures that he took. About 4,000 of them of various different school events like, you know, games, things that you know sports teams are doing in the school campus, that kind of thing. We'll uh, share more of his story, or we'll share some of it here in a moment. 855-450-FREE is our number. We've got Skype as well. With you tonight in studio, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget Derek J.'s website, thederekj.com, as we go to Zach in Minnesota. He's on via Skype, and our Skype username is lrn.fm. Go ahead, Zach. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Um, so uh, I've been giving this a lot of thought recently, and uh, I'm I want I'm going to make my first trip out this year. Out um, to New Hampshire for Pork Fest? Yes. Uh, well, that that's that's the reason for my call. Um, I, I know the concepts behind uh, Pork Fest versus Keen Vention. One's more academic. One's more Woodstock. I wouldn't call um, Keen Acad Keen Vention academic, but it is a hotel convention compared to right. a, a party in the woods. 
Right. So, so I'm looking for, you know, just real world opinions between the three of you, um, you know, for a first timer, which is, uh, I, I guess, which should I shoot for? Pork fest, hands Pork down. Pork fest. I mean, I don't want to undercut my own event or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Keenvention is a very specific event that focuses on the activists here in New Hampshire and focuses on activism. And, you know, that's what the panels are all about and the speeches and things like that. Porkfest is a blast. It's a week-long camping festival, and it's got the speeches. If you want to go see speeches, you can see those at Porkfest. That it has that stuff, um, but it also has you know parties and campfires and Buzz's Big Gay Dance Party, and uh, there's a rave I think every year nowadays. And uh, Derek J, what are you looking forward to this year? Uh, the media room is going to be on fire. There's going to be so many people uh, and events going on, and this year I'm doing a lot of hosting there. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't miss Porkfest for the world. It's the one event. The only time you missed it, you were in jail. Yeah. (laughs) I block out everything from my schedule in order to attend the full week. I know a lot of people like to go for just the weekend, and that's great, too. That will be, on its own, a mind-blowing experience. But nowadays, the whole week is like what the weekend used to be. Like I've been to Pork Fest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I've been to this event since we moved here. So we started going to Pork Fest in 2007 because Mark and I moved in 06, but it was after the summer. So we didn't go to that Pork Fest. Uh, We went to the one in 07, so we've been going ever since 07, and the weekend back in those days is more like what Sunday night is the first night these days. Like The the whole week nowadays is just chock full of people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, liberty-oriented people, many of whom already live in New Hampshire, but the vast majority of them are new like you, Zach, who've never come before. Every time I get up on stage at Porkfest, I love to ask the same question, and and that is how many people here are new to Porkfest? And almost half, at least half, if not 60% of the room will inevitably raise their hand, meaning it's their first time. And so to always have that many new people attending the event is really fun. And there's always just so much going on. You can't even do everything. You can't even scratch the surface on doing everything uh, at Porkfest. And sometimes you just don't want to do anything. You just want to walk around the, you know, the the campground and talk to people. By That's the my fire. favorite thing to do. Yeah. 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 Do you do you guys see more of, um, you know, uh, and and this is more logistical, and, and it might be boring radio. I'll try to be brief, but um. I mean, do people like share campsites or, yes. or is it more like, okay. Yeah. What I would yeah. recommend for you is to go to a couple of different places. There's a pork fest group on Facebook and there's also a pork fest sub forum on the free state project forum. So if you go to free state, Pro- excuse me, forum.freestateproject.org, that will take you to the forums. And then there's also again, pork fest. Uh, it's a group called pork fest on Facebook and that is a way you can go to the Porkfest group and then post in there, hey, I'm looking to share a campsite. Uh, or there may already be others who have posted that they want to share campsites. So this is definitely something that you can do. In fact, some people even will share rides. They'll post, oh, well, I'm coming from uh, Alabama and I'm going to come up interstate whatever. And, you know, somebody in Ohio might say, hey, can you come pick me up or yeah, whatever. Share gas. Yeah, so that happens too. People, total strangers, will share rides with one another just to get to Porkfest at as uh, in an affordable as a manner as possible. Not uncommon at all. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to plan that out. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys. Um, yeah, same here. I, I know we we've we've never met in person, but well, I've been get ready for a letdown. For... <laughs> <laughs> Ian's <laughs> weird in person him. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've been listening to you guys since 2007. So, and, and radio is just one of those uh, where I feel like I know you guys, even though you you may not really know me from Adam. But oh, um, I I know who you are, Zach. You're the guy who was going to yeah. join the police, and you didn't, right? Right, right. Yeah. And and that was thanks to you guys. Um, but but yeah. So like I say, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys, and cool. I'm going to plan it out. Right on, man. Uh, Porkfest, by the way, is coming up the last week in June. We should mention uh, the dates here. If you go to Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com, that's where you can learn a lot more about this event. And it's June 21st through the 28th. Basically, uh, essentially, it's a Sunday through a Sunday. So you can uh, can arrive as early as Sunday the 21st and then leave as late as Sunday the 28th. Some will, will arrive earlier. Uh, some real hardcore pork festers will arrive, you know, sometime in the week prior to pork fest and just, you know, take an extra week to go and tour around New Hampshire and, you know, drive to different parts of the state. Uh, so there's always something to do across New Hampshire. If you get here early, you can always visit Manchester or Keene and, and or afterwards. Some people will stay late as well. So they'll, they'll stay several days past 
uh, the end of Pork Fest and just kind of explore around New Hampshire because that's another fun part about being up here is kind of uh, getting in touch with the communities of uh, different people around here. Of course, Pork Fest brings them all together. So the last thing you want to do during Pork Fest is show up in Keene or in Manchester and like, <laughs> hey, where is everybody? Well, everybody's gone. So thanks, Zach, and we'll look forward to seeing you there because Free Talk Live is going to be broadcasting live uh, from the event. Derek J., you're going to be broadcasting your shows live. Uh, that would be Cop Block Radio and Flaming Freedom. You'll also likely Freedom be Fiends. listing Freedom Fiends more than once would be my guest yep. or guess. Uh, several Freedom Fiends hosts will be in attendance at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, as they were last year. And other great shows that you've heard on LRN.FM will be broadcast live, including the Rebel Love Show, Seditious Sirens uh, will be there as well, and many more. There's a bunch of them, and other shows will be produced there. It's not like a media thing. It's just there's a room where it is media for some happens. people. Yeah. I mean, uh, last year was a special event in that it was the the first and only time the Bitcoin group got together to do a live show together. Oh. Uh, whereas we've only been able to uh, connect digitally. This is the first time where we actually got to meet and do a show in person. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff like that that sort of happens off the official schedule too. Yeah. So like people who. Uh, have only known one another on Facebook or whatever in some group will actually meet for the first time in real life at Porkfest. And that's same not with a- Freedom Fiends, right? And that's not anything that's necessarily something you can see on the guidebook and be like, "Oh, the, these people from this Facebook group are meeting here." No, they're just in, they're just planning things on their own, going and getting together and spontaneous order, right? Visiting campsites and all of that. It's so much fun, and it's coming up here in less than four, about four weeks away. At this point, it's going to be here before you know it. So don't delay if you're planning or thinking about going to Porkfest. Uh, you want to go and get your plans together ASAP at Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. I should mention that I heard rumor that uh, as of uh, this weekend, this past weekend, there were 90 RV spaces left. Now, I don't know if that's the most sold out that Porkfest has ever been, I but I it suspect is. it may very well be. That sounds like very few. It's just few. the RV spaces. This is you know, Campsites are already sold out. Have been, Hotels yeah. already sold out. So this, this campground is fairly large. It's the largest campground in all of New Hampshire. They have two motels that they have on, this, on the site. They have uh, sort of these little house things that you can rent. Four cabins, there. yeah. Yeah, cabins. Uh, they've got camping areas, and they have RV spots. All of it's sold out except for 90 RV spots. So that now, j- just to be clear, you can still put a tent up on the RV spot. So if you're listening to me yeah. saying that and thinking, crap, I don't have an RV, I'm screwed. No, no, no. You can rent the RV site and put a couple tents on it. That's no problem. Are they bigger than normal tent sites? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It, a lot of people show up with a tent and then figure out where they're going to put it, too. That happens as well. You can fly by the seat of your pants at Porkfest, but I would recommend going in advance to the Porkfest group and you know posting, hey, I'm, this is what I'm looking for. And then people will likely respond and offer some assistance. So let's go to Dan. He's in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live listening via TuneIn. Hello, Dan. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Hey, um, tonight I want to talk about uh, FIFA. It's a recent story that came out today that uh, the FBI and some other U.S. agencies have uh, arrested the top officials Mm -hmm. of FIFA, which is the governing body of the world game of football, soccer. So? Um, you're not impressed, so, Derek J? No, no. Well, here's my here's my. Let him tie it in. <laughs> is, well, well, they took a lot of uh, bribes on where the World Cup would be played, yep. you know, where money would be spent and that kind of thing. Is it wrong for them to accept bribes in a voluntary organization? As a libertarian, well, is that wrong? Wait a minute. Just to clarify something here. Uh, so they were deciding where the, the main game is going to be held, the Super Bowl, if you will, of football, the World well, Cup. Uh, and so yeah, they were exactly. being influenced by different uh, governments to, hey, come here, that kind of thing, like getting a, getting checks. Yeah, from yeah, governments and, uh, you know, business and sports marketers, stuff like that. Let's you talk know, about it a, coming uh, up uh, here in moments because I guess the most relevant question is, is it against their rules of, a pri- of their private organization? It's free time. Have life. you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. And now, for Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car, we go inside your side door pocket. 
Hello, yes, the crumpled receipt with gum in it. From your anniversary dinner, you sprang for expensive wine, your server was Beth. That dinner was a couple hundred dollars. Money you could get back if you switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. I bet you'd save that receipt. Frame it, even. But really, where did I go wrong? Was it the corkage fee? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com today. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 27th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,185 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $240. Antiwar.com reports, speaking to reporters yesterday at the White House, President Obama demanded that Congress renew Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act before the expiration on Monday. Obama declared this needs to get done, praising the House for its approval of the USA Freedom Act, a watered-down reform bill, and saying the Senate needs to approve it as well. Section 215 is being used as the pretext for the NSA surveillance of the American public, and Obama insisted that allowing the surveillance to lapse would endanger the public. The White House is reiterating there is no plan B to keep the surveillance going if Congress does not give them the bill they want, though they similarly made this claim last week and the Senate still failed to pass the bill. The Senate needed 60 votes for a procedural vote on the USA Freedom Act and got 57 on Saturday. They then went into a holiday recess. The Senate is planning a Sunday session this upcoming week to try to vote again at the last minute, but despite heavy lobbying from the administration and pro-surveillance congressional leadership, it is unclear how they will secure additional votes. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a storm system triggered flash flood watches and warnings across seven states on Tuesday that killed 14 people and brought historic flooding to Houston. According to the city's emergency management coordinator, Rick Flanagan, up to eight inches of rain fell on Houston in less than 24 hours. More than 80,000 people were without power and schools were closed. Flood watches and warnings were in effect Tuesday in parts of Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Louisiana, and Mississippi. At least 14 people had been killed and 16 missing due to the severe weather since Saturday in Oklahoma and Texas. At least one person in each state is suspected of being killed by tornadoes. Officials in San Marcos and Hayes County, Texas said more than 400 homes had been washed away. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. 
Reuters reports Charter Communications seeking to remake the U.S. cable television industry by acquiring larger rival Time Warner Cable for $56 billion will try to skirt the regulatory obstacles that sunk the earlier bid by Comcast for Time Warner. The combined company would control a big swath of the cable and internet markets, making a huge step towards industry consolidation, long advocated by cable pioneer John Malone, Charter's biggest shareholder. But before that can happen, the Federal Communications Commission will look to see how American consumers would benefit if the deal were to be approved, that according to agency chairman Tom Wheeler. The agreement is the latest example of how cable companies are grappling with the declining subscriber numbers as viewers shift to cheaper and more flexible streaming services offered by Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and others. Even premium cable network HBO, owned by Time Warner Cable's former parent, recently started a standalone streaming service. Charter and others have been beefing up their higher margin internet business through consolidation and partnerships to offset TV subscriber losses. The merged company would still be smaller than Comcast, which serves about one third of US broadband users, said analyst Craig Moffitt in a note to clients. He added that one has to be sober about genuine risk that this deal could still be rejected. Still, experts said this transaction is different enough from the scuttled Comcast takeover that it is likely to win regulatory approval with certain conditions. Executives from Charter and Time Warner Cable said concerns were overblown that the deal could face the same opposition as the Comcast takeover bid. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Nothing you do or say will ever reach the lofty heights attained by the following news summary. This is The Onion Week in Review. Facing increased market pressure and a shrinking bottom line, media company Star Trove was forced to lay off dozens of unskilled bloggers this week. Sources confirmed that before being dismissed, many of the bloggers had been with the company for months, regularly performing menial tasks such as describing celebrity outfits and composing quizzes about Disney characters. I mean, I've been with this company for almost a year. It wasn't the most rewarding job, and I didn't have health insurance, but it paid the bills. I'm already 25 years old. I just don't know where to go from here. In other news, a six-day visit to a rural African village completely changes a woman's Facebook profile picture. A new dating website helps plus-size Jewish plane crash survivors find love. And a kid figures he'll go down the slide 36 more times and then call it a day. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial toll-free to join us here on the radio waves about whatever happens to be on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features waiting for you there with you in studio, Ian, Derek J., and Mark. And we're going to go back to your calls and thoughts, then coming up, a high school photographer who actually worked with the school yearbook, apparently, or excuse me, the school newspaper, is now possibly facing suspension and a federal investigation for posting his school photos online. We'll tell you more about that from photographyisnotacrime.com. But first, Dan is with us in Virginia. Now, you were telling us a moment ago, Dan, for listeners just tuning in, you were saying that the officials from FIFA, which is the soccer club, basically, uh, here in the United States, that uh, they have been arrested uh, and I guess they're a worldwide organization. They've, they've been arrested in the U.S., though, is that right, for ostensibly taking bribes? Do we have Dan? In Switzerland, but the, the reason the— They're in uh, Switzerland. Okay, but they were arrested in the U.S.? No. No, no. The reason that the U.S. officials were interested in them is because they believe a lot of the deals went down in the U.S. Okay. With, uh, you know, companies in the U.S., marketers, things like that. But, you know, my question is I, I find myself being very— uh, happy that these scumbags, you know, finally got what was coming to them because I'm a big uh, fan of soccer. But um, is that wrong? I mean, it was a voluntary organization. And, yeah, I don't see. I mean, uh, unless it's against the rules of the organization, then I would say that it it's, was. It was definitely was. It is. They claimed to. Well, that shouldn't be a crime, though. It up. Right? Like that's. It, yeah, exactly. Is it something that the U.S. officials should get involved with? No. And I find myself leaning towards no, yeah. No, it's an internal but, investigation that needs to be done within FIFA or but whatever. They, they, they tried that, and uh, the guy who came over was a lawyer from the United States who went over there to, at their request, obviously, and paid by them, which is, you know, always kind of funny, uh, like the police uh, investigating themselves. 
but but he he quit because the, the he said that they, you know they wouldn't publish the report. They made him edit certain things out that they didn't want in it, and so he just quit. And so they they tried that, and and uh, it's just. Well, the other you know, thing that people, you know, the other thing that people can do is market pressure. I mean, if if the uh, if the right. fans of FIFA ag- agree that these guys are scumbags, there, there is no there is no competition to FIFA. There's no none. There's whatsoever. still the fact that you don't have to buy their tickets, right? Like fans can still say, "Well, I'd rather spend my money on a video game or some other sport." Uh, rather than sure. you know go to yep. these games and support these corrupt officials. Yeah, this is um, I, you know I think this is a really interesting case, and I I looked at this today. Um, I didn't bring it in because I knew that uh, Ian would be kind of rigid about talking about yeah. sports generally. But yeah, I mean this is an organization that has basically become. A monopoly, a functional, uh, you know, market monopoly, and I'm not talking about a real monopoly. There's certainly other soccer organizations out there, but it's a functional one. It is the big boy on the block by a long, long shot, and nothing's going to change that. Like if it came out, if a news agency came out and said that this, uh, this Swiss guy that, uh, that you know, is at the top of this organization, step ladder, step uh, ladder, yeah. So this this fella, step um, ladder, shit, sep, 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 sep. Um, that this, F-E-P. yeah, this guy is corrupt as the day is long. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if you know the biggest newspaper in the world, uh, you know, Der Spiegel, whatever it is, comes out and says that uh, you know this guy's corrupt, it wouldn't change anything. People would still go to these soccer matches. They would exactly. still love them. They would yeah. still be excited about them. Market pressure, really, all they're going to do is sort of slowly erode the uh, the FIFA base, mm-hmm. and then at some point, some organization's going to come. Well, but I the, think that's the people, best thing that we can offer. We if, can ask. For. If the fans don't care enough about this, then yeah, nothing's going to change. Right? right, and the corruption that was going on in FIFA wasn't so awful that FIFA wasn't providing good service to its end clients. Yeah. Of was, course, the, the value was still there for the fans. Yes, but the, the, the point that you know this is a world sport that is in all kinds of countries around the world, the poorest of the poor countries, yeah. and and, uh, and they're the fans that. You know, aren't directly exploited, but they are exploited. I'm not. I'm not making excuses for it. I feel the same way that you do. Is this 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 to me feels like uh, I I did when I um, when the Boston bomber got uh, the death penalty recently. I'm like, great. You know, I'm like delighted um, that the the government got these people. I'm not on the side. You don't even know if he did it. Who? The Boston bomber. They have all the evidence points that direction. You looked at the evidence. What Uh, evidence? I have looked at the evidence. I heard they don't even have evidence. He put a bag down. That's true. They don't have evidence. But he went there with his brother, who they have evidence that he did it, and he drove his brother away, and they have evidence that that happened, and he ran over his brother trying to get away. So they've got some evidence. It's not like this guy is innocent. Um, do you want to talk about the Boston Bomber, or do you want to talk about FIFA? I don't really care, Mark. Uh, we're, we've got a caller on the line who called about FIFA. And as well, far as not talking about sports, I'd like to point out I have no problem talking about issues surrounding sure, you know, I'm talking, like it's a philosophical question steroids asking, or corruption nah, asking, when no, i do, when i say i don't want to talk about sports i don't want to talk about who won the game last night and what how many passes sure. johnny Bra- bravo has or whoever the <laughs> hell you know these sports players sure. are i don't care about that crap so in, insert insert monopoly organization and yeah. go yeah, yeah that's well, right. what it comes down to and i think that that really you yeah know, what happened is what happened. I want to share with you, caller, a wonderful book that changed my view on this and many other things. It's called Defending the Undefendable by Walter Block. And he does a, a chapter on bribe taking. He doesn't call it, you know, the bribe taker. He calls it the corrupt cop. But uh, in the context of a cop who takes bribes, uh, you can see when it would be moral to do so. Okay. Can Explain. you give an example of that? Um I know you probably haven't read it in a yeah, while. But. Yeah, uh, my the fact the that one you that comes to the mind, cop. <laughs> the the one that comes to mind is uh, a drug dealer and a and a cop. Uh, if a drug dealer bribes a cop to look the other way, and you know, but there's no so victim in that his, case. Yeah, so he keeps his business around. It's not so bad that the cop would accept a bribe and uh, keep peace. So thank you, Dan, for bringing the story to the forefront. I appreciate it. The toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. So, yeah, I think we all are in agreement. The federal government or whoever, whichever government, has no business in this private contractual issue. I mean, if these guys are supposed to be fair in how they decide which location is going to host this particular game, the World Cup, 
then they're supposed to follow their own private rules. And if they're not following those private rules, then there should be some sort of private consequence for that, whether it's they lose their job or they get a pay doc or whatever it is that the consequences are. But if but, the consequences— but this organization was corrupt from top to bottom. Yeah, yeah. Well, it has to be understood that there's going to be some kind of kickback for these people up at the top. They know what's going on. It's not like, sure. uh, you know, they're only sorry they got caught. The next guy's going to be a little more careful when he's collecting his kickbacks. And how much outrage is there really? I mean, of of the fans to this sport, how many of them are really, what percentage of, the, of them is outraged about this enough to where they're willing to not watch the sport anymore? Not watch? Not very much. Yeah. No. Not go to the games? Um, what's, what's the percentage there? I don't know. Your thoughts are certainly welcome. You can share them with us. 855-450 free. Speaking of games... That's some of the 4,000 photos likely that was taken by te- uh, Texas teen Anthony Mazer. The story from photographyisnotacrime.com. High school is meant to be a time of self-discovery, a time when an individual can explore interests and develop them into lifelong skill sets. Texas teen Anthony Mazer, however, has found himself in the midst of a legal battle with his school administration simply for following his passion, photography. Amassing a portfolio of 4,000 photographs, through his work with the student newspaper, Mazer began posting his work. <laughs> student newspaper. Okay, go ahead. On a Flickr account and even managed to sell a few portraits to his subject's parents. Awesome. But now the Flower Mound High School sophomore is being threatened the with what? suspension. Mound? What Flower called? Mound. <laughs> what is that? That is likely the it's area. A mound of flowers. Okay. I imagine that is an area okay. of Texas. So it's, it's, it's capitalized. Gotcha. Flower Mound High School. Yes. Uh, is being threatened with suspension for posting and selling his pictures online. According what? Why? to Fox 4 News, after catching wind of his entrepreneurial enterprise, school administrators pulled Mazer out of class no. and demanded that he remove all pictures from the site or risk in-school suspension and a ban from all extracurricular activities. He's selling pictures. The pictures he took for the school newspaper, he's selling them to people yeah. and making money. Mazer said, he's like, I'm asking you to take the website down. I'm not asking you to return the money you made. I won't report you to the IRS for not paying taxes. Oh, you don't Whoa. have to pay taxes unless you make $14,000 a year. Who is this guy giving le- giving tax advice? This I, is not tax he's advice. making threats. I think it's one of the administrators. We'll actually get the full story. From he didn't st- make $14,000. We'll get the full story from the student here in moments. 855 450 free is our toll free number. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm as we continue with Free Talk Live coming up. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So, who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. A dead iPod is remembered as expensive. It's the Onion Radio News. This is Doyle Redland reporting. 
Despite heroic efforts at resuscitation, a third-generation 30-gigabyte iPod, serial number AP356372, was pronounced dead early this morning at the age of two. The iPod's closest companion, Sarah Zartman, says she'll never forget the great music it used to play, nor will she forget the nearly $500 price tag. I'll remember those 3,500 songs as long as I live. That iPod was convenient, portable, and really pricey. Zartman added that had she known the iPod's lithium-ion battery would have such a short lifespan, she might have spent more time listening to it. AP356372 is survived by a BlackBerry. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show here. Usernames LRN.FM. With you tonight, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And ExpressCoin is where you can go to get Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And they're a licensed money services business. They are the best choice for getting cryptocurrencies. Go and start off at ExpressCoin.com. You can get them with a money order or a check, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, at ExpressCoin.com. Plus, they have a smartphone app that you can download or just use their website. With coupon code FTL, you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. Go try it out. ExpressCoin.com. I've used it. It works well. And you don't need to have a bank account to use it. No, you do not. You can do it with a money order, Correct. from what I understand. Which you could acquire at Walmart or the postal post service. office. Yeah. I recommend going to Walmart for it. A lot of Walmarts will actually do them for free. Uh, not all of them. There's the one here is like 50 cents, but in Florida, they would do money orders for free, which is awesome. So uh, that's one way you can uh, get help yourself. Again, go to expresscoin.com. As we continue with the story from photographyisnotacrime.com coming out of Flower Mound High School. In Texas, where a young man who is a sophomore at the school, Anthony Mazur, is now in the midst of a legal battle with the school administrators. Uh, he was forced into signing an administrative directive <laughs> with his parents. Sounds great. And had to remove his entire portfolio of 4,000 photographs from the Internet. So they actually did successfully force this young man through threats of suspension and a federal investigation to pull down the work. The I don't know how many hours of work 4,000 photos is, but uh, a I whole imagine bunch of it. it's quite a bit, uh, to pull down his what is essentially his life's work. I wish he internet. said no. I wish he did too. It's really sad. Uh, Mazer, There's nothing they could have done. It seems like this is, if they're calling it an administrative directive, they're already making things up. But this is totally made up. This is, uh, I'm, do something... Because I'm the principal and I'm bigger than you. Pretty much. Mazer, whose Flickr account now only displays one image, stated the following on his page, quote, My name is Anthony Mazer, and I'm a sophomore at Flower Mound High School. At the start of the school year, I joined a yearbook class and quickly fell in love with photography. Particu That's a perfect way that uh, government schools steal passion. Yeah, they from, crush from it. Crush it out. You can't create passion. 
I have never heard of a school creating passion. Mm. It's gov- private or government or whatever, but you can sure crush passion. So, well, he found his passion, and then it was crushed. Yeah. All in one fell swoop. I'd go to every game I could, he says. He actually says he particularly fell in love with sports photography. I'd go to every game I could and learn as much as possible. I never knew that one day it might launch a future career into photojournalism and content creation. My yearbook class asked me to take a trip down to San Antonio, where the Texas Association of Journalism Educators held a conference, inviting schools from all over Texas to listen to speakers, experts, and professionals give advice during classes and seminars about journalism, photography, and design. For the $100 I was asked to pay to go on the trip, I think it was well worth it. In one of the classes I took at the conference, the speakers, a journalism teacher from Argyle and her student, now working as an intern for the Dallas Morning News, told us the student began selling his work to media outlets and organizations and telling us how the photographers own the work that we shoot. So he went to a school-approved trip. Yes, where to they told a him. journalism education class. Yeah. Where they encouraged him, hey, you own those pictures. You should do this. You can make a little bit of money off of this. At the end of the class, I approached the teacher confused and asked that because I was using a school camera and using a school press pass, do I still own my pictures? She replied that I did. From that day on, that student and teacher from Argyle inspired me. I was filled with joy. I realized fully that this may be something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It was my passion. So I started selling my pictures to parents, tried licensing them to news organizations, and get internships to learn as much as possible. It felt great to receive such amazing support from parents, players, and friends. I believed I had found my place. One day, that all changed. I was sitting in chemistry class when a blue office slip was delivered to me. A principal wanted to see Uh me. The blue slip. (laughs) They were pink uh, when I was in school. Uh, Any color is bad. You don't want a colored slip. When I entered my principal's office, he asked me to close the door. Close the door, son. And on his computer screen was my Flickr website, where I posted all my pictures. That sounds so creepy. He told me I had to take it down, that I didn't own my pictures, that what I was doing was illegal. Why? What was he so mad about? I mean, what is this really about? Is he concerned parents are going to... Get on his back about oh my my daughter showed up in this kid's picture. And she was on at a public sporting event. Yeah, but I don't want it on the internet. And now this is your fault. And I want your job. He said, tried to explain himself. I told him about the trip to Ar- the Argyle about federal copyright law, which states whoever takes the picture owns the picture and can sell it. Federal copyright law means nothing in this office, son. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't listen. Instead, he threw stacks of papers in front of me and threatened me with in-school suspension, banning me from school activities, games, and from school camera equipment. Whoa. In addition, he gave me a concealed threat about asking for any money that I made off the site be returned to the school. He also made reference to reporting me to the IRS. Alone in a room facing him, with him threatening me like this, I have never felt so coerced before. Well, guess what? <laughs> There's going to be a whole lifetime in front of you where you'll be coerced by all kinds of government agents. This is kind of what government school really is about. It's about preparing you for being threatened for the rest of your life by various different government agencies. And it strikes me as odd that the principal would even remark about returning money to the school. I mean, what's John Hard Times guy? Oh, yeah. they are on Hard Times. Absolutely. Uh, you want this kid's 40 bucks or whatever? <laughs> yeah, he can't be making much. pictures. Jeez. In a later meeting with my parents, we were forced to sign an administrative directive agreeing to take my website down as to not have an in-school suspension appear on my record. Oh, my goodness. The look, permanent record. I don't know anything about anything about going to college. I went to a, a community college. Do they really care about an in-school suspension? I mean, really, Derek J., you went to college. Do you know? No, they never asked me. I don't think if I if I brought it up or if I lied about it, I, I mean, don't presumably think they would have inquired. They would have at some point pulled your record, right? Isn't that the idea that they'll look at your record and see? I guess so. Who looks? I mean, who's looking at these things? I, I would love to know, uh, has anyone's 
permanent record ever come back on them? Because I've never seen it. I think this is the most empty threat, the yeah. most successful empty, empty threat. threat that has ever been perpetrated on Americans. I don't know what it's like in other countries either. Do, have they managed to dupe their kids into believing y'all permanent record? It's because just so sad. I mean, it's just so sad to see people get pushed around like this. And, you know, you have to expect it from somebody in high school. They are I obedient. wonder if some cop has pulled somebody over. Looks like you were chewing bubble gum in study yeah. hall. <laughs> uh, but it's really sad. It, it's it's unfortunate because I could see myself if if I was in his role, I wouldn't give it a damn about your in school s- suspension. You <laughs> would have. <laughs> oh no! Don't send me to in school suspension. I've never been there before. Uh, I mean, what's the big deal? So you have to sit in a room for a little while, and you know they let you out eventually. I went to Saturday school once. You seem too. to like that. Not really. Was it, was it like Breakfast Club? But I was. I'm not going to get pushed around and delete the entire my entire life's work from the internet. 855 450 free is the toll free number here. But you can't blame this kid. I mean, he went to a dozen years of government indoctrination. They teach you to be obedient and scared. More coming up. Free Talk Live. Yubia needed financing to grow her restaurant business, but her bank simply didn't understand. I was frustrated. Yuvia found On Deck business loans. On Deck did it for me. I called on Saturday and I had $50,000 in my account on Monday morning. How about the terms? Incredibly easy. It doesn't mess with your cash flow. On Deck changed everything. This company, On Deck, is going to be there for me. Was it a good move? I'm looking to increase sales probably 30%. Been in business for at least a year year with 100,000 plus in revenue, On Deck can get you 5,000 to 250,000 dollars in as little as one business day, and they're A+ plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. On Deck has opened up so many doors for me now. Truly, truly the sky is the limit. I I'm excited. Apply now at ondecklending.com or call 800-326-5430. 800-326-5430. 800-326-5430. Loan subject to lender approval. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. CopBlock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopBlock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopBlock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopLock possible. So please join the CopLock network now at coplock.lrn.fm. That's coplock.lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. 
DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. Back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us here and share your thoughts on the case of the photographer, high school photographer, taking thousands of photos, put them up on his Flickr on the internet, and also contacted parents of students that he had photographed, like at the you know football game or basketball game or whatever. Said, hey, would you like this portrait of your son or daughter doing X, Y, Z? And the parents would say, yeah, it's a great idea. Here you go, kid. And give him 10 bucks or whatever he was charging. Who knows? Uh, and then he you know, made a little bit of money on the side from doing something that he had fell, uh, fallen in love with. He discovered his passion for photography by taking a journalism class, a yearbook class, basically, with the school. And now that very same school that had... <laughs> spurned this within him, has done its best to crush it, to snuff it out, to snuff that flame of passion out. Not the whole school, just one guy. Well, obviously he had other people behind him on this. There were several people How do you know? If you've ever been in the administrative office, you know it was likely other people. You know, somebody delivered the note to him in class, and then, you know, he went and met with the principal. Did you hear that, student? You know, the one who's taking all the pictures. He's got a website, and he's selling those (laughs) pictures. I mean, what do you think? It was some, like, uh, snitch secretary? Maybe. You know, it it sounds to me, me like it was one guy, this power-hungry, authoritarian, what's he, a superintendent, a yeah, principal? He's a principal, but was he really snooping around on uh, all the kids' Flickr accounts? Somebody told Maybe. Him. Somebody snitched him he's out. He's a creeper. What's he care that this kid is, is posting pictures? Why does he care so much? That's a great question. It's outrageous what they've done here because they've, they've basically crushed his entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, they essentially... You know, oh yeah, we want you to be in love with photography. It's great that you're taking pictures for our school newspaper, but uh, if you want to make any money off of your talents, whoa, well, that's not what the world's about, kid. The, well, these people hate entrepreneurialism. I mean, you know, they're government right. bureaucrats. <laughs> it's sick. Now, actually, um, there's a little bit more here from photographyisnotacrime.com, and they, at the very bottom of the uh, of the story here, link to Anthony Mazur's Twitter feed, and on his Twitter feed, it actually gives a link to this uh, administrative directive. So I've got the full administrative directive here so we can uh, read exactly the threats that were leveled at he and his uh, his family. Uh, we'll do that here in a moment. But continuing the story from photographyisnotacrime.com, according to reports, administrators claim that because the equipment Mazur used belonged to the school, the photographs belonged to it as well. Nope. And he had no right to sell or post any of them. The school went on to claim that Mazur's work violated students' privacy by posting their image. Okay, so two false claims here. One, we've already addressed this privacy claim, this ridiculous claim that you've, you've violated students' privacy by taking pictures of them at public games where anyone can come with a video camera or, or still still camera and take pictures of kids, whether they're their kids or someone else's uh, kids. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But further, um, the only way the photos would belong to the school in return for him using those cameras is if he was under contract. Now, or if he was a baboon. What does that mean? You don't baboon? remember the uh, story of the macaque um, that uh, that uh, took a picture with the photographer's camera, okay. and uh, oh, yeah. then Wikipedia was arguing with um, the you know the, the 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 guy who owned the camera that since the the picture was taken by the macaque that he didn't own it, the macaque owned it, and didn't it didn't the court decide that the the, the macaque, macaque did owned not, the pictures? No, the, the macaque did not own the pictures. Maca- macaques cannot own pictures. So the only so who way, owned it, was it public property? No, nope. the, the the photographer did because he owned the Son camera. Of a bitch, that's terrible. Well, it's only <laughs> look the macaque doesn't care anything about your picture. <laughs> well, right, but if the owner didn't, if the well, anyway, what I was going to say here though is that if you're, for instance, if you're in radio, um, that's our business, and you're employed by a mega mega corporation or whatever, they're going to have you sign a contract that says, ah. You free talk live guys. Whenever you do a show, you're doing a show for iHeartMedia or whoever it is that owns yeah, the this show. This is what happened to Letterman with uh, before he created Worldwide Pants. 
Oh, I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is a huge story. deal with uh, Letterman, and um, you know, the, he who, wasn't under contract, or he who was... owned the, the 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 intellectual property right. um, under? It's almost know. always the corporation. Basically, they yes. they do say while you are working for us, while we are paying your paycheck, if you go out on a job that we assign you to go out on, those pictures are owned by Mega Corporation. Yeah. Right. Um, but in the case of the school, I highly doubt he signed an agreement when he went into the journalism class saying that he would, you know, relinquish control, intellectual property rights over all the photos he took. I highly do agree, yes. Yeah. So uh, given that he did not likely sign that paperwork, they are totally BSing him in this case. M- yes, they Mazer- will do that. Mazer's family is currently awaiting the response from its appeal to the superintendent of the Louisville Independent School District. The family's first appeal to the principals of Flower Mound High School was denied, according to Petapixel News. The district's board policy manual states, quote, A student shall retain all rights to work created as part of the instruction or using district technology resources. They're just dead in the wrong here. But yet the principals of the school denied. So what will they say at the superintendent level? I guess that remains to be seen. Now, the school district must prove there is a reasonable expectation of privacy within the school when surveillance cameras are already monitoring the hallways of most schools as we photograph and as as well. I don't understand this sentence here. Monitoring the hallways of most schools as we photographs and videos being taken regularly. As well as photographs and videos? I guess so. Being taken regularly by students with their own cameras. It also begs the question that since Flower Mound is part of a public school district, how much legal privacy can a student enrolled in such an institution expect? We understand. Well, we know that at least in the local school district here in the Monadnock Regional, Every parent signs a statement, and the student, I presume, also with at the very least, uh, parents sign a statement, basically saying you can record our student and photograph our student for any purpose: television, radio, newsprint. Well, that's and web. Uh, yeah, they sign it now, but they'll change that uh, once you guys, uh, you know, show them up on that uh, legally. Yeah. We understand students have an expectation of privacy inside bathrooms and locker rooms, but that doesn't seem to apply to hallways and athletic fields. Despite all the commotion surrounding him, Mazur remains firm in his resolve, buying a personal camera and soldering in, uh, soldiering rather, on in the continued pursuit of a passion. He has received a great deal of support from the online photography community, inspiring. Yeah, I, bet, I bet some people send him a camera. Honestly, that could be inspire or send him some money, uh, inspiring the Pound I M Anthony solidarity campaign. So that's a trending tag on Twitter there. Mazur is a talented photographer, as you can see through his photos on his Twitter feed, which evidently has not been ordered into shutdown by his school principal. And that is the end of the story from uh, photographyisnotacrime.com. So on his Twitter feed, Mazur links to the administrative directive. This is what he and his parents were ostensibly forced to sign under certain threats, there's a non-compliance provision here if he does not sign this. Okay. This is what will happen. I'll share that with you coming up. But first, Sean is in Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. Sean. Um, yeah, who are the hosts tonight? Ian, Derek, and Mark. Um, yeah, I was calling um, in regards to Chris Cantwell being taken off the air mm-hmm. from you guys. Yep. And um, just... I've been listening to your guys' show for probably about six months now. I'm an amplifier, and I really enjoy it. I think you guys put out some great information. Great. Thank you. But I'm a I'm firm supporter. That I mean, he, I agree what he did was ignorant at the moment, but he puts out so much good stuff, and his him working with you guys, you guys just work so well together that I just hate to see you guys lose that aspect of your show. Yeah, me too. You know, I try to listen to your show as often as possible, but I never miss a Wednesday night. You know what I mean? Yeah, it frustrates me as well. Well, let me ask you this. To you live. What? Let, let me ask you this. Um, so you're the. I'm going to make you the general manager of Free Talk Live right now. Um, you, ba-dum, ba-ding. <laughs> I've just turned you into the general manager. Now you have um, on the you know you have a host who has used the N word on Twitter recently. You know that uh, there have been a myriad of talk show hosts who have lost their jobs uh, forever and ever for using the N word. Sometimes not even on the air. You know that uh, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony Cumia a late, sorry. of uh, Opie and Anthony was uh, you know lost his job. Not even on the radio, on, uh, on satellite, satellite, private satellite subscription for just, you know, some people assuming that what he when he said savages, that he was referring to black people. Um, 
and your host doesn't want to apologize for it. He won't apologize for using the word. What do you do? Stand by, Sean. We'll let you answer that question coming up. 855-450 free. What would you do in that circumstance? 855-450-3733. We'll come back with more free talk live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Are you suffering from EP? The symptoms include fraudulent charges to your credit card. Your subway card says it's empty, but you bought it yesterday. Someone's been in your hotel room, but the desk clerk says they only show you entering the room. These are signs of EP. Electronic pickpocketing. Payment cards, transit cards, even hotel room keys. Use a radio chip so you can just wave your card at the register, the turnstile, or your hotel room door. But what's convenient for you is also convenient for thieves. Waving scanners to electronically pickpocket you without even touching you. The good news is there's a cure. ID Stronghold has created leather wallets and clutches that have built-in EP protection. Layers of shielding material cleverly concealed in a beautiful leather wallet that stops the symptoms of EP. Go to IDStronghold.com now and get the cure. IDStronghold.com. Warning, ID Stronghold wallets could lead to feelings of safety and security, comfort in crowds, and euphoria. If you experience these emotions, immediately inform your friends and family about IDStronghold.com so they can feel better too. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. we got time for you. If you dial right now, 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. It's Skype username LRN.FM. Joining you tonight in studio, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Check out Derek J. on his website, thederekj.com. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can watch his movie, 
victimless crime spree, which I believe you linked to from thederekj.com. Yay! So go and check that out. Uh, we've got Sean. He's on the line in Nevada. Said he's a listener of the program, loves Free Talk Live, and really liked it when we had Chris Cantwell on. I don't think that's a slight against you, Derek J. It's just that I you, didn't take it that way. Right. Uh, Cantwell was normally on Wednesday nights, and now you're here uh, tonight. And, Mark, you had asked Sean the question, if he were the general manager of Free Talk Live and the situation with Cantwell happened, and just to recap for listeners just tuning in, Chris Cantwell is a relatively controversial personality. Lots of people don't like his sort of rough personality. He's marketed himself as an a-hole in the past, although he changed that recently. He no longer calls himself the anarchist atheist a-hole. He now calls himself anarchist atheist abolitionist. And as far as I'm concerned, I feel like we've had a positive effect on him in that way because he changed his tagline after having lived in Keene for a year and having some interesting experiences. So uh, all that aside, he did do something a holy. Uh, on Twitter, and he called somebody the N-word. Um, he, I don't believe, is a racist. I don't believe that about him. I think that in this case, he was just being a low, you know, he was scraping the bottom of the barrel. He was going for the lowest common denominator and, you know, hit, hitting as low a blow as possible against this person. Um, but all that said, what do you do if you're the general manager? Sean, go ahead. And he won't well, apologize. I mean, the comparison that you guys gave of being, you know, like, I'm and Scott taken off and OP and those guys did that stuff on the air representing the, their nope. show. Nope. Not, uh, okay. not Opie, Anthony. Anthony Cumia did it on his private Twitter account. No, no Twitter account is private. It's all open okay, to the I'm public. Okay, I'm sorry. His, what I'm well, saying is fair, his fair. Twitter account. I'm not saying that his uh, yeah. that Twitter account is private, his but it wasn't a Twitter account, account yeah, for um, for the uh, the satellite system. He got pulled off of satellite radio, which you know announces itself as this uncensored venue for talk content and music content. He was pulled from Sirius Satellite Radio because of what he said on Twitter. Yeah, and I mean, and I just also don't find the comparison to be that close because you guys are the controversial radio show. You guys do talk and take on the controversial views. You've Opie never and Anthony is very controversial. Well, you're, you're really not you're, not, you're not playing my game here, right? Like, as the general manager, you're just going to go ahead and let a guy, um, without a suspension at all, you're just going to let him get back on the air and uh, after having used the N-word on his Twitter account? Is that right? Well, you know something? If I have not gotten to the point where you guys are giving him a temporary suspension or something like that, that's, maybe that's different. I heard indefinite suspension. Yeah, and he's suspended that that indefinite. It's indefinite. Bigger, he's got to apologize. That was a much bigger <laughs> loss to the show than any single worst use of any word on earth could ever be. Your guys sure, I understand how you and, feel about that, but I don't think you're taking okay. everything into account here. So um, you've yet to really say what you'll do as the general manager, but once the phones, you know, even if you are on the of the mind of, well, I'm going to stand behind my staff because, you know, that's who they are and they should be able to be free speech, blah, blah, blah. Well, when the, what yeah, happens I mean, when the advertisers start calling you up and asking you what you're going to do about this? I mean, it, you can tell them to go pound I, sand. I say stand behind your staff because you can only stand behind your staff do, as long you guys, as you're cutting them paychecks at the end of the week. But you're not cutting him a paycheck. Guys. You, but I'm cutting kind of, Ian a paycheck. Do you well, want Free Talk fair. Live okay. to go away? Because that's really what you're no, saying I mean, here. That, that's not certainly not my point. But I mean, it's. We were it, putting you into the position of a being a general manager and yeah. generally at a radio station, and then you kind of changed it into this radio station scene, and we're talking about advertisers. So when you're working at a radio station as a general manager, you're generally paying your staff. And it's great to say you want to stand behind your staff, but if your advertisers take off, then you can't pay your staff anymore. So how does that help your staff? I mean, I see what you're saying, but as long as you guys take your stance, I think that you, you will be – respected for the point that you what you guys are by and what you've always been. That's great. We've got Sean's respect in Nevada. Uh, well, your your, no, your advertisers have respected your controversial views and the point that you corner Maggie Hassan and do Man, stuff like that. Most of our advertisers and, don't know any about that, anything about that. Yeah, most advertisers are just on Free so Talk Live. about Chris Cantwell using one word one time? They would you know find I mean? out about it. Right. When when some organization like Media I'm Matters— they couldn't well, find out, but I'm not saying they would find out either. Well, you know I don't I mean? know. That's a that's the best point that we've, that's been made here so far, is it's possible this would have just kind of slid under the rug and it wouldn't have been any big deal, right? That's certainly yeah, I mean, possible. Like but some organization— No, 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 no. 
sir. The fact is that nobody, half of people didn't even know Don Imus was on the air until this nappy-headed hose thing got picked up by Media Matters, and they ran that ball all the way into the end zone. If some liberal organization finds out that one of your hosts has used the N-word um, on Twitter, it's it's a big deal. All your advertisers are gone. Three quarters of your stations are gone. It's over. So what would you do as a yeah. general manager? I mean, I guess I would play it until uh, until it came to a head. I, it is more of where I would go with it. You'd and wait. You'd wait until concept. you'd you'd play damage control after you already lose an advertiser or two, basically. I, yeah, I would play damage control later. And you see can't really say you're sorry it. then. You can't say. I mean, at that point, you know, You've when been you been busted. Yeah. You, 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 <laughs> well, no, you could say that you gave a temporary suspension. You, but you you'd know, be you lying because you didn't say you were going to do that. But you, it, hold on, it's not a temp, It's only a temporary suspension. No, no, no. I, said, I said initially, I said I would certainly agree to a temporary suspension. Uh -huh. I didn't like the idea of indefinite dis suspension. Okay, Got so uh, but a temporary I, suspension is only a value if you have the host say something like, you know, I'm really sorry I used that word. I should have thought of a, you know, I should have, I sh should have thought been differently. More I could have said something else. You know, like those kind of things. He's not willing to do that, and that's the position you're in as the general manager right now is you've got yeah a temporary suspension's fine but you got a host that's uh you know not going to apologize is going to get back on the yeah, air some like black caller is going to call in and, and say what's that well i feel that bringing it back on and doing the whole apology thing brings it back to the forefront now you're bringing it back up to be remembered and to be noticed by more people let him be suspended. We've got, Let him go for a month. But if he's not back, sorry, then, then he could do it again, right? Tens of thousands of listeners. One of them's going to be black, and one of them's going to say, "Hey, I'd like to talk to Christopher Cantwell about using the N-word on his Twitter." And then he goes, yeah. "Boom!" Cantwell goes, you know, in bomb on him, and then we're, you know, back in the same problem because he didn't apologize and he wouldn't say that using the word was, you know, inappropriate. Are there other words that are like the N-word that, really. that you really um, are forbidden I mean, to I think use? The not really. Word holds a lot of power. Still these the days, C word's pretty bad. Yeah, the yeah, C word I mean, can't be used I mean, on the air. That's for sure. But well, it, but even not so. Like I, I mean, I have a roommate. We used to call her a worthless C word all the time because one of our friends that never cusses, he's a Buddhist, called her that one day completely randomly. <laughs> so we used to give him a hard time and call her that, and she loved it because we call her that in Walmart, and you get these great looks from people just for using the word. It, it was awesome. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just to to light people on fire. You know, it's, it's fun just to screw with people sometimes. Yep. It, it seems but, uh, interesting to me that this is a discussion happening around radio. I just don't like to put that radio. much power in words, you know. I, just I hear you. Right. I don't want it either. Allowing that to be such a huge strength that you're yeah, gonna, I understand you're your frustration, so but uh, it is what it is. Derek J., what were you trying to say there? Yeah, that this is just a unique kind of conversation that could really only happen now on radio because— Happened on satellite. Well, no, I I mean in this format, this talk uh, show format, is uh, it's so bizarre. That I can't think of other words that are like this where if you say them, that's it, game's over— you know, yep. throw in the towel. Uh, you have to b keep a distance from this show forever and ever. Well, no, it, it was a timeout. Here's your pencil. Write an apology. Okay, I right? get, I get that. But <laughs> he write called an the apology. next day. By the way, he's not banned from being on Free yep. Talk Live as a caller, but he's just not a co-host. I time. get it, but the way Mark has framed it is, it's not wrong because it hurt somebody's feelings. It's wrong because it might upset advertisers. Well, no, it's. Well, I, I think it's societal pressure, right? I mean, societal that's what pressure. It, what yeah. it really. Ends up comes down to right. Yep. I don't like that word personally. I don't. Or, yeah, I don't like that word personally, and I don't like the idea of you know standing behind someone saying that either. word. Don't get me wrong. Right. I'm not, None I'm of us no are defending it. The action that he did. Right. We're, I think it was completely ignorant on his behalf. It, it, it downgrades the. Uh, a little bit of my view of him. Unfortunately, but I think he, he is does, not willing to agree with that statement, and he is not willing, at least of, of the last conversation I had with him, and we received an email from him today on this topic, uh, that he is not willing to eat any crow. Uh, he's willing to apologize for inconveniencing us and has said that he would think twice about saying it in the future, which I consider to be pretty good for Chris Cantwell. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. <laughs> uh, and, sure. like, for me, that would be enough, but Mark saying that's not enough for him... Um, but you know, I, I understand where Mark. I do understand where Mark's coming from. Maybe we'll and see how it all shakes wrong. out. I mean, you 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 know, you build your whole career on something like this, and have something that that slight ruining a career, basically. I mean, how much uh, how much of your life? Yeah, you as put of right into now, it would, would I think awful. I think not, the I'm thing not endorsing that, that action either. Yeah, I think what Chris isn't seeing, and thanks for the call, Sean. I think what Chris isn't seeing here is he's taken short term gain in favor uh, over long term. 
And, you know, we've all gained out of this, okay? Uh, Free Talk Live actually has an extra ampl- amplifier. We didn't lose any amplifiers over this. We have an extra amplifier, so dollars-wise, we're doing better. Cantwell says he's got more listeners now than previously, so he's yeah, doing better. There's a synergy. But I think he would have done better had he stuck with Free Talk Live in the long run. That's just my opinion. We'll see you tomorrow night. FreeTalkLive.com and TheDerekJ.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 27th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,185 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $240. Antiwar.com reports, speaking to reporters yesterday at the White House, President Obama demanded that Congress renew Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act before the expiration on Monday. Obama declared this needs to get done, praising the House for its approval of the USA Freedom Act, a watered-down reform bill, and saying the Senate needs to approve it as well. Section 215 is being used as the pretext for the NSA surveillance of the American public, and Obama insisted that allowing the surveillance to lapse would endanger the public. The White House is reiterating there is no plan B to keep the surveillance going if Congress does not give them the bill they want, though they similarly made this claim last week and the Senate still failed to pass the bill. The Senate needed 60 votes for a procedural vote on the USA Freedom Act and got 57 on Saturday. They then went into a holiday recess. The Senate is planning a Sunday session this upcoming week to try to vote again at the last minute, but despite heavy lobbying from the administration and pro-surveillance congressional leadership, it is unclear how they will secure additional votes. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a storm system triggered flash flood watches and warnings across seven states on Tuesday that killed 14 people and brought historic flooding to Houston. According to the city's emergency management coordinator, Rick Flanagan, up to eight inches of rain fell on Houston in less than 24 hours. More than 80,000 people were without power and schools were closed. 
Flood watches and warnings were in effect Tuesday in parts of Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Louisiana, and Mississippi. At least 14 people had been killed and 16 missing due to the severe weather since Saturday in Oklahoma and Texas. At least one person in each state is suspected of being killed by tornadoes. Officials in San Marcos and Hayes County, Texas said more than 400 homes had been washed away. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Charter Communications, seeking to remake the U.S. cable television industry by acquiring larger rival Time Warner Cable for $56 billion, will try to skirt the regulatory obstacles that sunk the earlier bid by Comcast for Time Warner. The combined company would control a big swath of the cable and internet markets, making a huge step towards industry consolidation, long advocated by cable pioneer John Malone, Charter's biggest shareholder. But before that can happen, the Federal Communications Commission will look to see how American consumers would benefit if the deal were to be approved, that according to agency chairman Tom Wheeler. The agreement is the latest example of how cable companies are grappling with the declining subscriber numbers as viewers shift to cheaper and more flexible streaming services offered by Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and others. Even premium cable network HBO, owned by Time Warner Cable's former parent, recently started a standalone streaming service. Charter and others have been beefing up their higher margin internet business through consolidation and partnerships to offset TV subscriber losses. The merged company would still be smaller than Comcast, which serves about one-third of U.S. broadband users, said analyst Craig Moffitt in a note to clients. He added that one has to be sober about genuine risk that this deal could still be rejected. Still, experts said this transaction is different enough from the scuttled Comcast takeover that it is likely to win regulatory approval with certain conditions. Executives from Charter and Time Warner Cable said concerns were overblown that the deal could face the same opposition as the Comcast takeover bid. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. McDonald's is now offering bereavement prices, and a sexual predator gets tenure. This is The Onion Week in Review. This Wednesday, Samsung announced the release of its brand new really big f***ing television. Representatives for the South Korean electronics manufacturer told reporters at a press conference that the goddamn gargantuan of an electronics product boasted a variety of new features, including being super heavy and having a screen that was probably a hundred f***ing inches wide for all they knew. We here at Samsung think this new product will appeal to today's consumers who are looking for a television that's really, really huge. I mean, this thing is built like a truck. You, you just, you just really have to see it to believe it. In other news, an important